on CBS Sports. It's the Michigan 400. Father's Day, 1994. With kids, it's always give and take. with fathers and their children. In the world of racing, it's the same. Except that here, the catalyst is so demanding, so dangerous. But when a father has lived his own life on those dangerous heights and a son elects to make this sport his personal quest, it creates a special bond. No father in any sport could be any prouder than uh, a racing father when he sees his son doing what has to be done because he's been there he knows the pitfalls he knows the ups and downs he knows how tough it is to win races there's a camaraderie here that transcends the speed and danger it can be frustrating heart sickening or at times rise to glorious moments it's the dale and dale show as we come off a of turn four you know who i'm pulling for it's dale jerry bring her to the inside dale don't let him get down there he's, he's gonna out. make it dale jerry's gonna win the daytona 500 for a son, that moment had special meaning. You came so close back, I believe it was in 63 when you ran out of fuel. I thought we'd get this one for the whole family. Well, that certainly was a proud moment. I wish every father could experience it. And then to have my son to remember me and Victor Lane at his proudest moment is something I'll always cherish. And today, the tradition continues as father Leroy Waltrip oversees son Daryl and Michael as they prepare for 400 miles of blazing action from the Irish hills of Michigan, it's the Michigan 400. The story at this hour here on the two mile Michigan International Speedway lies in the weather and to the track itself. Escalating temperatures could aggravate a nasty situation in the critical turn three area. There's an 800 foot newly put down patch of asphalt that's been tearing up. A driver told me it was like coming off an asphalt highway and hitting a gravel road at 185 miles an hour. Yesterday, it led to three incidents in the running of the ARCA 200. None of them life-threatening, but certainly something to talk about. Throughout the night, they watered and broomed this portion of the track. And just a few moments ago, David Hobbs filed this report on turn three. Well, I'm on that patch that caused so much problems yesterday afternoon. The patch is new, it's smooth, it's sticky, provides a lot of grip. Just off the patch, we've got the old surface, which is nothing like a sticky, so the drivers have been chasing their cars all weekend trying to set them up for this bit of road. Now, the road itself started to come up yesterday. You can see where it's feathered, and that swept a lot of gravel up there just really offline. That is offline when you're practicing and qualifying on your own, but when you're racing with 42 cars out here, you're not always going to be able to pick and choose exactly where you want to go on the highway. And anybody gets, gets up there this afternoon in that gravel could be in a load of trouble. Depends somewhat on the temperature. Ken? Well, thank you very much, David. And we've talked about the track to Ned Jarrett, our colleague. Let's talk about the competition. Well, there's going to be plenty of it here this afternoon, Ken. A great field of cars and drivers. But the same heat that's taking its toll on the asphalt could take its toll on the drivers and the engines here this afternoon. And an added challenge for those starting up front. There are five rookie drivers starting in the top 20 positions. They don't know how to deal with that situation over there quite as well as the experienced drivers. And then you have the point leaders, Ernie Urban and Dale Earnhardt, starting back in 23rd and 24th place. We know they're going to be trying to come up towards the front, but it isn't going to be easy for them. Now, one competitor who's had first-hand experience with just how treacherous this turn three can be is standing by with a new colleague, Dr. Dick Bergman. Four different drivers have crashed between turns three and four in practice for this race. One of them, Hutt Strickland, has crashed up there twice, wrecking two different cars. He's in a backup today, borrowed from Bill Elliott. Hutt, what's it going to look like up there today? Well, we don't know, Dick. Uh, you know, the racetrack yesterday evening got pretty bad out there, and, uh, you know, it's pretty slick. I think that new asphalt is coming up a little bit, and, you know, from maybe some of the sand and grit is coming out of the new asphalt and making it, uh, you know, pretty slick up top. So, uh, you know, this racetrack that normally, you know, where you can move up a, a groove a little bit if the car is loose, I don't think you're going to see that today. I think you're going to see pretty much one groove, especially through three and four. Well, we're way in the back of the pack. Mike Joy's up front. Mike? 
Thanks, Dick. Loy Allen is on the pole for the third time this year, but he's still looking for his first top 10 finish. Right behind him, Bill Elliott has four wins in this race, but no wins since November of 92. Who's been doing all the winning? The black cars. Irvin and Earnhardt have three apiece. This man has four. Rusty Wallace seeks his third in a row today. Now, a Roger Penske-owned car has never won here at his racetrack, Michigan. Are you feeling racy? I feel pretty good. I've won here before, though, in different type of cars. I think that uh, Penske car hasn't won here. It's just something that, that won't keep continuing on. I mean, the car is really strong. This is a new car. It's qualified well. We tested it against midnight, and it ran faster than midnight. So, you know, let's keep our fingers crossed. I hope the patch up and turn three and four holds up. I don't see a problem with it right yet. But uh, just thanks for everybody's support, and let's hope we have a good day. Well, it's 130 degrees in there. He's dressed in black, and there's no place he'd rather be except victory lane. Ken? A million dollars at stake. 42 drivers are at the ready, and we're pleased to bring you CBS flag-to-flag -flag coverage of the Michigan 400. Stay with us. This CBS Sports Special, the Michigan 400, is sponsored by the all-new Ford Mustang. It is what it was and more. Valvoline Motor Oil. People who know use Valvoline. And by Goodyear, number one in tires. Two hundred laps, four hundred miles to be run here this afternoon on a track which always gives us great competition. It's the Michigan 400, a little over a million dollars on this beautiful two-mile facility. There you see the race record of 169.12. Big question if that's in jeopardy today. And, of course, it was set by the late Davy Allison in that blazing race in 1991 when he defeated a member of the family, Hutt Strickland. Feel just about ready to roll off. And in a key position to watch the race today is another father who enjoys this sport as uh, much as his son. Up on the roof in the spotter area, Vic Urban is standing by, getting a good look down there at this 42-car field. Vic, any butterflies for you as Ernie goes for another one? Vic, can you hear me? Ken Squire. Yes, I hear you. Any butterflies for you as your son yes, gets I, ready uh, to crank it up? I kind of have butterflies every race he starts. Now you're, I hope he has a very good day today. You're up in the spotter area. Are you working for him today? Yes, sir, I am. Uh -huh. Did you build his first cars? Did I build his first car? Yes. Yes, I did. Well, he's got a beauty today, and we hope that it does well, and you have a great Father's Day. All right. Have a good day. Brother's night. Deal rolling out. And let's get a look at how they'll line up for this afternoon's running of the Michigan 400. On the pole for the third time this year, it's Loy Allen. And alongside him will be Jeff Bodine. For row two, seven-time winner at Michigan, Bill Elliott, and Terry Labonte having a great season. Row three, the 88 Michigan 400 winner, Rusty Wallace, and defending champion Ricky Rudd. In row four, it's young Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin, who won here in August of 90. Row five is Greg Sachs. With him comes Brett Bodine. In row six, it's Michael Waltrip and Morgan Shepard. Row seven is Jeff Purvis and Derek Cope. Virginians in row eight. There you have Ward Burton, the freshman, and Rick Mass, the veteran. Row nine is Joe Nemechek and Jeremy Mayfield. In row 10, it's Jimmy Hensley and Sterling Marlin. Going to row 11 today, Jimmy Spencer's there with Kenny Wallace. Row 12 is Ernie Irvin and the 87 to 90 winner, Dale Earnhardt. In row 13, Rich Bickle and Bobby Hillen. Row 14 is Steve Grissom and Lake Speed. For row 15, Tim Steele in for the injured Chuck Bound and Bobby Labonte. Row 16, Ken Schrader and rookie Jeff Burton. Row 17, John Andretti and the two-time winner here, Darrell Waltrip. Row 18, Dale Jarrett won a race here in 1991 and Todd Bodine. Row 19 is Harry Gant and Robbie Gordon with a new team. Row 20 is Hutt Strickland and Ted Musgrave. And in those provisional starts, it's Felix Savetta's cars of Kyle Petty and Bobby Hamilton. And Ken, when I mentioned that might be tough on the engines here this afternoon, that spot over in turn three, it's sort of gooey, and the cars in front of you might pick up some of that asphalt, throw it into the grill of the car and even into the radiator so they could. They're concerned about having overheating problems. There you see that spot on the track. One driver told me he picked up 15 pounds of weight from that.
that crew over there, weighed the car when they brought it in, cleaned it all up in a 40-minute practice session. So it can be a real factor. Now, let's see. They may go green, or they may throw the light back on the uh, pace car. They're taking a really careful look before the sold-out audience at that turn three area. Lake Speed giving us this view from the top of the car, his Ford, as we get ready to go here today. Grasp of the veteran Bud Moore, car headquartered in Spartanburg, South Carolina. And having a great season. That's the view from outside of row 14. Back straight away. Remember, this is a D-shaped track. And the corner where you're in, here's Sterling Marlins on board camera. Sterling, the winner, as you saw with us, Daytona back in February. And this is that car on the lawn up, getting ready for the start this afternoon. Mark Martin prepared to give it a go. Paul always gives us dramatic pictures. Yes, he does, and he always runs strong on this racetrack, too. Remember, nearly won it a year ago. And they're back to caution. And now you're riding with young Jeff Gordon up there in the seventh position and getting ready on the start. Caution is out. Give it another lap before they turn them loose. There you see the front row. Loy Allen, who sat on the pole at Daytona, does so well in qualifying. Why on these super speedways so strong, Ned? Evidently, he has a lot of confidence in himself as a driver on the super speedways, but he also has good engines in the cars and a good setup for super speedways. To Dr. Dick Berger. Further back, anybody has come to win this race can his ninth spot, Cale Yarbrough in 1983. All the way back in 23rd spot is Ernie Irvin. Beside him, Dale Earnhardt. They're the two points leaders. They're going to have a real tough job today because they're going to have to get to the front without filling up their radiators. Mike Joy? Dick, some of the teams have talked about installing shaker screens in front of the radiators. Dirt track fans are familiar with those. They catch the clods of dirt or gravel, and then the screen shakes and they fall off instead of getting into the radiator. Darrell Walter prepared for this race this morning by drinking his customary two cups of coffee, followed it up with a quart of water and a quart of Gatorade, and has another quart on board. Ken? Down for a start this time around. They'll need that Gatorade. They'll need that water. The temperature actually today is cooler than yesterday. At the same time a day ago, we were at 93, about 85 right now, but it's on its way up. D-shaped, two-mile, beautiful track to run on. It is a beautiful racetrack to run on, and it's not uncommon to see them running three and sometimes four wide, especially on the tri-oval here on the front straightaway. But don't know what that turn three, they're going to get in single file as quickly as they can going into that turn. It is truly a one-groove turn three today, and you've got to hit it just right. If you're high, you're going to go up in the marbles, as you saw in those pictures from that race that Jeff Purvis won yesterday. You're away. You're in for a ride right to the wall. Yes, you really are. But, Ken, it's not that uncommon to, to have a one-groove turn in most racetracks. But this racetrack normally has two or three grooves, and it's just uncommon here. And to have it loose underneath the footing, that's the issue. They've done an outstanding job. Les Richter and Roger Penske himself out here at 1.30 in the morning working up in that portion of the track. Trying their best to get it race ready. We're away. We're watching it live. There goes Wallace diving to the inside. Three wide. Going to turn number one on lap number one. Welcome to Michigan. Back straight away. Bodine bangs Allen. It's Bodine on the outside. They slap the little paint. Now, Jeff Bodine has a decision back before he gets into turn three. He'd like to get down in single file. He's doing it right there. Terry Lamotti, who's had such a great year in that number five, that yellow car. And look, Start. one car already high. Yeah, that is Jeff Purvis, one of the rookie Oh, and one car spinning, headed for the wall. That looks like Jimmy Hensley. It is Jimmy Hensley in the car number 55. Had a good qualifying run here, unfortunately. He spun out. Don't see any damage on the right side of his car. Loy Allen has just completed the first lap he's ever led in his career as they came to the line. No one up there to take it away from him. Even though this is his third pole of the 1994 season, it's the first time that he has led. Well, they're walking on eggs out there as they go into turn number three this afternoon. Oh, that looks like... Uh -oh. Like a motor may have gone away? Well, uh, I would say that it would either be an oil line or, or an oil filter, maybe as opposed to take a look at the first lap net as they got this race underway at turn three. 
We see Jeff Purvis high on the outside. He got into that loose stuff going into turn three, and perhaps Jimmy Hensley slowed a little bit, not knowing what he was going to do. Jimmy Spencer in the red car got into him just a little bit as he slowed down, and Jimmy Hensley then spun to the high side of the track. From late speeds view. And he's looking, that's Ernie Irvin down on the inside. And here comes Bobby Labonte passing, and you can see that the action is up on the high side of the racetrack. There's Jimmy Spencer. He might have touched Jimmy Hensley. It was just one of those deals, you know, everybody crowding in, trying to get the same spot at the same time. Lake Speed, this is Ken Squire at CBS Control. What did it look like to you out there? Ken, I tell you, it looked like one of the cars up front went in the corner there and slid up. Some of the other guys reacted, maybe slowed up. Somebody got hit from behind. And that's what caused the spin. Lake, are, are you concerned about turn three? You did a lot of testing out here in happy hour last night, that last practice session. Lake, can Ken, I didn't catch uh, uh, the first are, part of your question there. Would you repeat, please? Yes, indeed. Are you concerned about that turn three as you go into this race today, and how concerned? You don't know for sure what you got until we get to running a little bit. We're going to have to wait until the cars thin out and we can really start letting the cars go. Then we'll find out what, you know, what we have there. But I'd like to take this time, too, to say hello to my wife and, and my children back home, please. Thank you. Thank you, Lake. Let's go to Mike Joy. Ken Ward Burton feels he may have dropped a cylinder on the start, and this is a crushing shame to the rookie who starred last year in the Grand National Series. At Charlotte, they wrecked the car hard. This is the same car with a new front clip, and he was involved in an early race wreck last week at Pocono. He needs the time on the track and needs the experience, but Craig Briggs and crew are looking at the engine, and they've told him to shut it down. Thank you, Mike. Here you see Hensley's number 55 in. They continue to work that one over. Yeah, there is some damage on the left side of the yeah. car. The right side looked okay, but you can see as they remove the hood, it's banged up, and the left front fender, of course, looks like it's gone. So two laps have been completed. They're working lap three at the present time here in the Michigan 400. CBS Sports coverage of the Michigan 400 will continue after this message and a word from your local station. laps are complete here at Michigan. A couple more laps under caution. Dr. Dick Bergman can tell us more about Jimmy Hensley's number 55, which still is resting on pit road. Well, Ned, you had it right for sure that we've got a tire problem and also an oil problem, but which caused which, I'm not sure. This is the tire that came off the left front of Hensley's car. As you can see, it's quite disintegrated. The oil line that has failed is near this tire. However, they took one other tire off that was flat spotted, suggesting that the car may well have spun around in the racetrack, precipitating this failure. Mike Joy? Well, Dale Earnhardt, as most of you know, is the son of a famous racer. His dad, Ralph, was two-time national sportsman champion. But on this Father's Day, he's also the father of three promising racers. Friday night, Kelly finished 13th at Tri-City. That's Dale's daughter and his two older sons. Dale Jr. was sixth at Myrtle Beach Saturday. And oldest son, Kerry, was sixth at Hickory on Saturday night. They don't all race at the same track. I mean, one Earnhardt in one place at one time is enough. Au contraire, Mike. They had all three of them at Myrtle Beach last Saturday yes. night. <laughs> Let's take a look at the Hensley car and what happened there, Ned, as it was coming well, You in. see all that smoke coming from it. The tire disintegrated, and apparently pieces from that tire did break an oil line, as Dick Bergren pointed out, and that's why we saw all of that smoke. See, the oil cooler is very close there uh, to that area where the tire is coming apart. If you're just joining us, this happened in lap number one. We're about a lap away from a restart, and they continue to work on Jimmy Hensley's car. That's an unfortunate moment for that driver from Ridgeway, Virginia, with the DNR racing machine. There's Harry Gantz, number 33, coming in. Hutch Strickland, number 23, just behind him. That, a Junior Johnson car, after Strickland lost two cars, destroyed them up here in turn three. There's Harry, last time here in this race, gets one more crack at Michigan in his final season. On his farewell tour, I want to hang it up after the 1994 season. Let's review the front of the field as they get ready to go. Loy Allen now has led the first five laps from the pole with his Ford. Jeff Bodine's Ford is in second. Then it's Terry Labonte's Chevrolet in third. Rusty Wallace's Ford in fourth, followed by Ricky Rudd, Bill Elliott, Mark Martin, Brett Bodine, Jeff Gordon, and in 10th, Greg Sachs. Morgan Shepard back in 11th, and Michael Waltrip in 12th. A quick note from David Hobbs. 
three Bodine brothers in this race, one of whom is Todd Bodine, got involved in that first lap fracas. He came in, they had a look around the car, they couldn't find any damage, but he is reporting the car is vibrating. However, he is going to stay out there and see how it runs. As they come down for a start, looking further back, 13th is Cole, 14th is Mast, 15th is Sterling Marlin. And running in 16th is young Jeremy Mayfield out of Owensboro, Kentucky. Earnhardt in 17th. He's picked up in one lap, but six spots. We're green flag racing again. All single foul as they head down into, well, now Ricky Rudd makes a move on Jim Bodine trying to take over second. there in turn two. And there Jeff Bodine is on the outside. He doesn't want to go into that turn on the outside if he can help it. He wants to get back down in single file. Rusty Wallace gives him the room to do that. Tip towing at 185 miles an hour through turn three. We still see some cars running side by side back in the field. Ricky Rudd looking very <laughs> Ricky Rudd, that is uh, Terry Labonte. Ricky Rudd is also in that front pack. Terry Labonte driving the car number five, the Hendrick Motorsports car, looking very racy here in the early part of the race. Terry Labonte closing. Qualified fourth. Already has a win this year. Going for the lead. Texas Terry Labonte puts number five in the first place. Boy, he got a good run going what? down the back stretch and moved right on the inside of Lloyd Allen. Lloyd didn't find him going into the turn, which was a smart thing to do. Now, that turn three, as you go in there, is a place where you do get in the break a little because it, you do pitch. It's a big D going down into turn one. Entirely di different situation in turn three. There's Ward Burton in turn number 31, about to go a lap down, as was reported. He's uh, having Ooh. a problem uh, with the engine, and here's the race between the two point leaders, Earnhardt on the outside of Ernie Irvin. Ford and Chevrolet battling it out here to the greatest stars in the sport. Now watch these two get it. Uh oh, Michael Waltrip had a problem in car number 30. The yellow car, he just slowed all of a sudden. Rick Mask in the car number one went around him very quickly. Here's Joe Nemechek in the yellow number 41. That's Derek Cope in the purple and black car that they're going by on the outside. Earnhardt back in 16. Michael Walker headed into the pit. Certainly an unscheduled pit stop for him. He has been having a good run here in recent races had a number of top 10 finishes but having to make an unscheduled pit stop on a pole here a few years back and he's right through the pits and out again yeah. Michael Walter did not stop he went right straight through and out well you wonder if maybe he has a brake problem and couldn't stop or either just couldn't find his pits I don't know we'll have to see what the problem was it's a very costly situation for him Take a look here at the Lake Speed Telemetry. He's running in 22nd position and coming to the inside of Jeremy Mayfield. Boy, he really stepped off down to 150 miles per hour. Now watch it climb. Speed pulling up. Mayfield using up a lot of racetrack there, Ned. Yes, he is. And here we Lake, come for turn three. Lake doesn't know which way to go. You see, he got up about 181 miles an hour. And there goes Jeff Purvis, got by down on the inside. Purvis had a great day yesterday, won that Arca race here for the second year in a row. Rocksville, Tennessee campaigner, just pulled in front of Lake Speed. That relegates Speed back to the, another position back, back to 23rd. Look at Earnhardt fighting his way through. Greg Sachs in the 77, coming up with him now. The 13th. Still moving forward. Battle up for second spot. You see Loy Allen in second. There is the number seven. That's Jeff Bodine. And with him comes Rusty Wallace. And right behind him, Ricky Rudd. Rudd, the winner here last year, as he made an economy run at the end. Mark Martin led for what, 140, 41 laps? Then with 12 laps to go. Rudd was there. Martin dominated the race. Of course, Rudd was driving for the Hendrick Motorsports team, the one that Terry Labonte is driving for now. And Labonte, of course, leading the race. At this point, Rudd has his own team this year. Jeff Gordon. 
works on Schrader. Following Bill Elliott picks up the draft of Elliott on the straightaway and drafting does come into play here at the Michigan International Speedway with those speeds up over 180 miles an hour on the straightaway. The drafting does help. Back there in ninth. Well, Earnhardt is doing it once again. Driving with that wild abandon of his. He's coming up through the field. You see him challenging on Schrader in the 26 car. But it's uh, Brett Woodine in the I car beg your pardon. 26. On, on Brett Woodine. And Greg Sachs is following Earnhardt. Every move that he makes, Greg Sachs in the car number 77 is trying to follow Earnhardt through. Now, of course, Greg started in front of Earnhardt. And Earnhardt got around him, and now he's trying to see what he does to move up towards the front. Mike Joy has an update for us. Ken, on Michael Waltrip, these cars are fired by electronic ignition systems, and sometimes the black box just quits. That's what happened. He had to get down off the racetrack and switch over manually to a second redundant ignition system. His car is now fine. Leader Terry Labonte, by the way, is driving the exact same car Ricky Rudd won with here one year ago. And for the Michael Walker fans, he did not lose a lap when he came into the pits. He's still on the lead lap. He's only about a quarter of a lap in front of the leaders, but uh, he still is on the lead lap, being shown in the 40th position. Allen, Bodine, and Wallace, second, third, and fourth, as Terry Labonte leads for the first time since back in April. Here is 11, 12, 13. Bernhardt is now 11. You saw the 77 go after him. And look at this three wide as Ernie Irvin scoots down to the inside. Well, he picked up some momentum with those cars running side by side. Thought he could make the pass. Couldn't do it. Greg Sachs on the outside just drove in deeper than the others. Kept the position. Bill Elliott's having a very good run. Elliott in the number 11 in seventh place. The leader, and there you see the interval between Terry Labonte out in first, Loy Allen second, Jeff Woodine in third. So Rusty Wallace right there in the Ricky Rudd lying fifth with his own team. They're running at a pretty good clip as far as the speed is concerned, Ken. 41.09 in seconds, just a fraction over 41 seconds the last time around. And the pole speed here was only about 40, 40 point something so if they're running within a half a second or so of what they qualify but for the moment nobody can run down terry lamonte these three cars four cars in a draft not making much of a dent on that lead that terry lamonte has put on the board as he comes around to complete his 17th lap it's 175 miles an hour that he averages around the racetrack that's good speed in race competition top of the field. Labonte in front. And in this interval, back to second place. Loy Allen, Jeff Woodine, Rusty Wallace, Ricky Rudd, followed by Mark Martin at sixth, Bill Elliott seventh, and Jeff Gordon is in eighth. A little further back, we have Morgan Shepard in ninth, and Brent Woodine in tenth. But for the moment, it's all Terry Labonte in first place. The Labonte family, a racing family from Texas. One laps now complete. Major change. Labonte still in front, but there's a new challenger. Rusty Wallace, as you look at the interval going down the back straightaway, almost no interval. Wallace in the second, Bodine to third, Ricky Rudd coming to fourth, Mark Martin to fifth, and Loy Allen falls all the way to sixth spot from the pole. There you see Mark Martin for a moment back there in the fifth spot. And once Rusty Wallace got around Loy Allen, it didn't take him long, just a couple of laps, Ken, until he ran down. From Mark Terry Martin, Labonte. running in fifth spot, closing on Ricky Rudd. Two laps ago, Bobby Hamilton, number 40 from the Felix Savannah's team, one of the provisional starters. He moved to 33rd, lost an engine, came on pit road. Ward Burton has also come in. Here's your battle for the lead. This in lap 23. Rusty Wallace going for three straight Winston Cup victories in a row. Tucks it back in as they head for that turn three area. Wallace back on the inside, and look at this challenge right at this very ticklish part of the racetrack. Got a great run down on the inside of Terry Labonte. He has Jeff Bodine coming with him. 
I suspect that Bodine will help his own fellow driver try to draft on past Labonte as the head end of turn one. You're watching some real racers wheel to wheel and side by side. That track may be tearing up, it may be sticky. Doesn't bother them. They flat footed through there, made it too wide, and you have Wallace out in front. Gant running slowly yes, on the bottom of the speed way. Inside. He gets out of the way of the leaders, but his car is definitely not running up to speed as Jeff Bodine does make the pass. Four second place. Look, Wallace already has a four or five car length lead on Bodine. So, the new leadership. Wallace first. And right with him, Terry Bodine. Terry Labonte back to third. Mark Martin in fourth. Loy Allen coming in then. An unscheduled pit stop. They normally can run about 40, 45 laps, but uh, this is an unscheduled pit stop. Let's go to the pits and Mike Joy. Ned, about five laps ago, he called into Dennis Connor, the crew chief, and he said he thought he'd lost a weight that's used to balance the wheels. He had picked up a bit of vibration. Let's see if they go around and change the Hoosier tires. The first tires we've seen were those off Ward Burton's car, and the wear looked fine. They're going to put right sides on, and that's a bit of a gamble because if one wheel is vibrating, you've got a 50% chance of getting the right wheel here if you only put on two, but that's what they'll do to try to keep him in the lead lap. I believe he will get lapped as Rusty Wallace comes around. Yes, he will. As he comes out of the pits, Rusty Wallace goes by, so he does go one lap down. Well, with three ten seconds, I think road for Roy Allen. Only four drivers have won from the pole in this 400. Looks a little doubtful for Loy right now. Rusty Wallace is your leader. He's led 10 of the 14 Winston Cup races in 1994. And here comes Bodine after him. Get Bodine in that number seven. Another certainly made famous by the former owner driver of that team, Alan Kowicki. Bodine brought it to victory in the Winston Select in Charlotte, North Carolina, the week before Memorial Day. Here he is challenging this to complete lap 26. I saw Mr. Gerald Kowicki, Allen's father, down in the garage area this morning. He looked very good. He came up here to watch these cars run, and he's hanging around the, the truck of Jeff Bodine. Great car builder, great engine builder in the USAC days of stock car racing, and uh, certainly a great friend of the sport. Not that USAC hasn't got some stock cars running pretty well right now. There was a time when they had that big circuit. Didn't you yes. run some races out there? Not, not like, in USAC. No, I ran some, but yep. I didn't win. <laughs> the I wasn't trying to put you on the spot. <laughs> well, thanks for the thought. <laughs> Top three. Wallace there. Boy, this team, they're really loaded for bear for this race. I have never seen Wallace so focused, so determined. Very little time for the press, very little time for anything but getting the job done here. A little concern about that turn three area, but this is Roger Penske's track. The Penske team is on a roll, winning in IndyCar racing, won the last two Winston Cup races, and he wants a good performance on what they call their home track. See the average speed, and as Ned was pointing out, the lap speeds are right up in there. Ripped up third turn or not, they're standing on it. Yeah, they slowed just a little bit. They're running about 41.50 now. That's the elapsed time around the track, 41 and a half seconds. I was, uh, was estimating the, the qualifying speed, 39.85 is what Roy Allen ran to win the pole here for that race. So now they're running almost two seconds slower than the pole speed, but still that is good as these tires get heated up. They normally slow down a little bit. There you see the front of the field and just behind them, this, the 10 car is being challenged by Jeff Gordon. There's your leader. There's Wallace. Now you see a bit of interval. And just behind this interval, here's Jeff Gordon. You can see that front car is just up there, chewing on that rear bumper of Ricky Rudd, last year's winner. And that car we see up there in fourth place, Mark Martin, is gaining on that threesome up front. And Ricky Rudd himself might be gaining a little bit as well. From Mark Martin, running in fourth. Trying to close on Labonte right up there in front of him by 17, 20, 20 car lengths, something like that. And he's picking up a car length or so every lap. Coming about to complete 30. 22-year-old Jeff Gordon, winner of the 600 at Charlotte, North Carolina this year. His first Winston Cup victory, point victory. Of course, he won 125. Whoa, that is rough. Yes. He almost, Ricky Rudd almost got out a little bit too far there, but he got it back in. Harry Gant on pit road number 33. An unscheduled pit stop for him. 
or, or at least it's, it's earlier than we anticipated. We figured they go from 40 to 45 laps on this first run before they would come in for a pit stop. But Gant obviously coming in. We saw him running slow there a little bit ago, so he must have had a vibration or a tire going down or something. Twice a runner up in the 400. In 81 behind Bobby. In 86 behind Bill Elliott. Elliott still making a day of it in 11th spot. Here's Gant coming back out. Earnhardt in the three car in seventh position. He continues, and Ernie Urban right behind him there in eighth position. They have come from 23rd and 24th up to the seventh and eighth position. With Morgan Shepard in ninth, Greg Sachs in tenth in that picture. Morgan Shepard having a great run in the Wood Brothers car, which uh, the Wood Brothers car have won many times here at the Michigan International Speedway with a, a lot of different 11, drivers. Eleven times. Yeah. Kale and Pearson were the ones that really carried on. And, of course, there was a win by some kid named Jerry here a few years ago. <laughs> Mike Joy has an update. Well, Ken, this is the right rear tire that came off Roy Allen's car. It blistered in two parts along the tread, and the tread started to separate from the carcass. This does not necessarily mean the tire is bad, but it means the way the car is set up, it can't take advantage of the handling characteristic of this particular tire. They're either going to have to make a change on the handling, or Roy's going to have to adjust his style. He said the car wasn't sticking to turn three. This is the result. Michael, you're an old short tracker. That looks like a, a Saturday night uh... Uh, tire, you know, up at Riverside Park or Stafford after a while, huh? Well, Ken, I'm not that old, but <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, yeah, that happens, I think, more frequently on short tracks than on the super speedway, but, of course, we are in a tire war here, the Hoosier versus the Goodyear tire, and uh, so each, to each uh, company is trying to make a tire that will be fast and that will last, but those are the two edges of the swing of the pendulum, speed versus reliability. We've seen it all season. We're seeing it again today. And we would remind our folks in the pits, Mike Joy and Dr. Dick Bergen, we're getting a report by Robbie Gordon's right side. That's on the Robbie Gordon car. That's that new team, uh, Michael Cranifus and Haas, but there's a lot of damage being shown on that machine at the present time. We'll update you on that story shortly. Remind you again that Rusty Wallace is in command of the Michigan 400, leading New York's Jeff Bodine and Texas Terry Labonte, riding third. Wallace is of St. Louis in front. Well, there you see the standings after 35 of 200 laps with Wallace out in front, turning laps a little over 175 miles an hour. But now, as you see further back in the field, we see Jeff Bodine coming on the pit road in car number seven. Bodine, who's been running up in uh, the top of the field, has fallen back, and he's on pit road. Hood is up. He was running in second place again. We saw some smoke coming from the car as he came down the pit road. We thought maybe he might be coming in for tires. We've seen a number of cars come in for pit stops earlier than we anticipated for tires, and most of those that we've seen have been on the Hoosier tires, and Joe Bodine is on Hoosier tires. His car seemed to be running fine. All of a sudden, he made the entrance to pit road. But this is not a tire problem. a look at the uh, Robbie Gordon's car for a moment back there and this is the new Michael Pranifus Carl Haas team this is their first time out this car got lost up in turn number three and they bent the back end two days ago got that straightened out and we understand that the right side here already is showing a little damage indeed it is yes he's been against something it could have happened on that first lap incident that was back in the area where he was on the racetrack he could have gotten against someone or maybe scraped the wall a little bit Dick Bergen can tell us more well, the basic problem, Ken, is the same as many other teams are having today. Robbie Gordon is pushing. He turns the steering wheel to the left, car heads out to the wall. That is the same complaint we've heard on the radios from many of the teams. They should be pitting at about 10 laps or so, and they can make some adjustments to help their problem. Mike Joy has an update on Jeff Bodine. Ken, in yesterday afternoon's late practice session, Jeff got only half a lap in and blew the engine. They put a new engine in it, and apparently, one of the oil lines up in the front of the car to that engine to supply oil vibrated loose during the race here. They didn't get a chance to practice with the new engine yesterday afternoon. So they have tightened it. They have taken the occasion to put four new Hoosier tires on the car. And in sharp contrast to Loy Allen, the wear on Jeff Bodine's tires looks very good. Bodine was in a minute and 31. 40 laps are now complete as we're back with the leaders. And Wallace commandeers the event. 
staying second for the moment is Terry Labonte in the number five. Mark Martin third, Jeff Gordon fourth. Ricky Rudd is fifth, Earnhardt is sixth. And it should be a four-tire change on Wallace very shortly. Expect him in in the next eight laps. Here you can see Gordon. Fourth. Wallace electing to pit right now. Yeah, he's coming in a little bit earlier. They have run, it'll be 41 laps when he comes by, but he didn't want to take any chances whatsoever. So he's headed down towards Mike Joy. Mike, is this a little earlier than you thought they might come in? No, Ken, they want, uh, rather, Ned, they want to get in and get a look at these tires. So at 41 laps, he's the pace setter and the first of the leaders to come in. That means everybody else will have to come in in the next lap or two. 65 miles an hour down Pit Road. That's 4,200 RPM on Rusty's Cat, and he pulls in. Talk about Father's Day. Buddy Parrott, the crew chief here, Todd and Brad Parrott are among this group, which is the fastest bunch of tire changers in the business this season. Finishing up on the left side, Rusty revving the engine. He's gone 17.7. It's amazing. It looks like there's confusion, but there's no confusion, folks. They, everyone knows exactly what they're doing down there, and to get out of there in 17.7, change all four tires, and fill it up with gas. Here you see the five and the six back into it. And as they come about, we had a report that this Labonte car may have skimmed the wall for a moment. It doesn't look like it down the back straightaway, Terry Labonte, and here comes Mark Martin right after him. Mark that Martin would be the first place the at this point. So we take a look. Yes, there is a car up against the, the wall. That's not Terry Labonte. It's uh -uh. A, a white car. That Let's looks see. like uh, Greg Sachs. It is Greg Sachs, indeed. Car number 77, but he kept it off the wall, lost a couple of positions, but keeps going. He'd been running in 10th spot at that time. So we're back with the leaders and with that pit stop. You now have Mike Martin in first, Terry Labonte in second, Jeff Gordon in third, Ricky Rudd is in it. Here's Ernie Irvin coming in. This is at lap 43. And as Mike Joy pointed out, the others will want to come in quickly because when they put new tires on out there, they're going to run a second to a second to half faster around the racetrack, and you can't afford to give up that much for many laps. Purvis is pit. Kenny Wallace has brought the uh, number 81 car in as well. And here you see Ernie Urban back out. Average speed has gone up to 138, 39 miles an hour. If you're just joining us, we had an incident in lap one on turn three. Here's Mark Martin coming in. And Remember Dale Earnhardt. Chance up in front. Dale Earnhardt is right behind Mark Martin. Brett Bodine is right behind him. And then uh, Bobby Labotti. So many of the front runners making pit stops. You're riding with Mark Martin seen as he sees this pit stop. Gets himself something cool to drink. He's just done a book on conditioning for drivers. Of course, he's a workout fanatic. He really is. He's a very strong. He's one of the smallest drivers on the circuit, but also one of the strongest. His service is completed. He heads back up. See it come off the jack, and he's back underway. Bobby Labonte coming in. Michael Waltrip on pit road. Gordon now is inherited first place. And there's, ah, we've got one coming apart. It looks like Lake Speed is coming in. A lot of smoke coming from Lake Speed's car as he comes down pit road. That's from back in the uh, license plate mounting area. There is Lake's car in the Budmore number 15. He was coming in for a normal pit stop, Ken, and all of a sudden, just as he made the entrance onto pit road, a lot of smoke came from the car. And now they're pushing it back to the garage area. Apparently, something let go in the engine, so they're pushing it back to the garage area. Jeff Gordon stays first. Morgan Shepard stays second. And they're pushing back Lake Speed's car, getting some assistance from Samal. They've got a pit coming, and Rick Bass is going to pit right there. They're rolling him back in front so Rick can get in. So they'll go back to their own pits there for a moment until Rick gets his service, and there's yeah. Steve Grissom coming in right behind them. So they had, and Steve overshot his pits, has to back up a little bit. Let's see if we can get a word with Lake Speed. Lake, what happened? It looked like you're coming in on a regular stop. Lake Speed, Ken Squire with CBS. Can you hear us? Yeah. What happened, Lake? It, we lost the cylinder, Ken, and then I think it must have dropped a valve or something because it. Acted like it blew up when we came down pit road, started smoking real bad. 
Ford Quality Care guys to get back here and see if we can patch it up, maybe get back out. So you're going to try to run for some points today? We'll have to assess the situation and then see what we can do and see if it's possible to get back out. you got to remember Lake Speed is up in ninth place in points. He's having a great season. And you can see the thing expiring here. They're going to try to do some work and get him out here to see if they can keep Lake Speed in the top ten for the Bud Moore team. All right, we're at lap 40. And then some. Here, 47 complete now at Michigan. And we'll update you on the story as Jeff Gordon continues to lead in a moment. This Michigan 400 race summary is sponsored by AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. The race summary after 100 miles, five leaders. The lead has been changed five times. Average speed at 150 miles an hour. Two cautions for five laps. Only one car out of the race. Jimmy Hensley from an incident on lap one. But I think we'll see some more out here in just a moment as uh, we're under caution for the moment. And the caution here you see. We've had three cars all of a sudden eliminated. Brett Bodine, we've had a spin by the 28 car of Ernie Urban up here in the corner, and Loy Allen, and you can see the Bodine car all torn up in the nose. This all happened after they came through this area where turn three, here you see Greg Sack 77 in, cutting away on the front of that car. He was involved in it as well. Here's the Ernie Urban. He was the first one to spin. Is he coming off of turn four? Must have hit a slick spot or something. The back end just went around, clipped, maybe clipped the wall a little bit. If it did, it, it, I don't think it did any damage. You can see he locks the brakes, keeps it down on the inside, and then back behind him, Loy Allen was spinning at just almost the same time, but the caution came out. And the car number 24 of Jeff Gordon had just committed himself to come into the pits, as we see Urban going around there. Uh, you see him way up on the outside and looping that car. Now you'll see the other one spin, Loy Allen, just behind them. Here's the 28 car coming to rest. They get up high, they get loose on the outside in three, and there's Loy Allen. He had spun well back in the center of that corner. And then there were some other cars. We saw Brett Bodine's car parked down there. He walked to the ambulance, and the Greg Sachs car, which was on pit road, a lot of damage to it. And uh, Rick, uh, Terry Labonte is in, has a flat tire on his car right now. And when Jeff Gordon came into the pits, had committed himself to come into the pits, the caution came out at about that same time. And so he alertly went on back out, stayed out uh, on the racetrack. It has put a lot of cars a lap down. And now you see Jeff Gordon making his pit stop. He's coming in. And let's go to the Jeff Gordon pits with Dick Bergman. Well, they had been waiting for Jeff Gordon. They are concerned to hear about gas. They were afraid he was going to run out. He went further than he wanted to go. But Gordon is now in for pit service. He will take on four tires and a couple of cans of fuel. Gordon in the pits, your class leader, David Hodge. And Todd Bodine, who was mixed up in that first lap spin, came in, stopped, had a look around the car, said it had a vibration. Hey, presto, here he is 100 miles later, going out in second spot with a new set of tires on. What a drive up through the field for Todd Bodine. So Todd Bodine, who'd had a moment up in front, Jeff Gordon, I think will get a chance to inherit this lead again if they shake it out here. Now, this was a critical moment in the race with Gordon coming in the pits and then coming back out again. Mike, you were talking to Ray Everhand about this race and how they thought they could win it. Mike Joy? Ray's a former NASCAR modified driver, and he's a good crew chief. He engineered Gordon's first career win Memorial Day weekend at Charlotte. He decided the only way to outrun Rusty Wallace here at Michigan was to run Rusty out of gas. So they had planned to do this race if it stayed green on just three pit stops. It laps 50, 100, and 150. It was lap 50 when the incident occurred, and he came down pit road and went back out. So they're going according to plan. And the other fellow who was in the same boat, I believe, was old KG Darrell Waltrip, who has long been NASCAR's gas mileage king. Yep. Remember, one of his last good finishes was his second place here a while ago. And they're putting ice packs on Jeff Gordon's chest. That'll uh, give him a comforting feeling as he goes back out. These cars can get up to 135 degrees or maybe even a little more inside on a hot day like today. So he needs all the cooling he can get. Temperature headed up toward 90 degrees for the fans, 135 degrees for the drivers taking on a bit of liquid. You see Jeff Gordon, who is fighting for first place and for the moment 
hasn't. It's according to NASCAR scoring. We'll tell you more about the Michigan 400 with 53 laps complete in a moment. CBS coverage of the Michigan 400 continues after this message and a word from the local local station. This CBS Sports Special, the Michigan 400, is sponsored by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. Bush, the official beer of NASCAR. Split Fire, the patented performance spark plug. It only costs more until you use it. And by McDonald's. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Here at Michigan, action all over the Speedway has brought out the second caution. Brett Bodine having trouble uh, on one end of the track in turns one and two. And the eighth place runner, Ernie Urban at the time, spinning and then two other cars spinning up here in the turn three and four area. Dick Bergeron has an update. Well, Ken, they've been concerned all day about Jeff Gordon and temperature. The last two races, they've had temperature problems. At Pocono, it was a bad gauge. At Dover, something went wrong. They didn't know what, but they put a lot more ducting in the car this morning. And this is what they're putting down Gordon's chest, these ice bags. Several drivers are using these. They're jamming them down the front of their uniforms. Ray Everham says it's okay. The car's running cool enough, and the driver will he'll make it, too. But wouldn't that kind of constrict the muscle? Some, some people can't handle that stuff. Well, I... I think as hot as they are, you put that in there uh, that it would uh, pretty quickly get get warm, but it would cool them down. I think they can can handle it okay. I think it was Ken Schrader that told me that he, he well, has maybe, trouble with that. Okay, that maybe just, some drivers uh, couldn't. But muscles the other way. Yeah. yeah. Well, two laps before this crash, Greg Saxon on the radio saying it was really slick. He thought there was oil down in turn three, or it may have just been oil coming up out of that asphalt. They've tried everything out there, put lime on it, which is a way of, as a catalyst that pulls that uh, aggregate back together. But uh, apparently what they had been concerned about is becoming a reality in the turn three area of the Michigan Speedway, where a 780-foot patch of asphalt is tearing up and the heat is once again getting to it. It's been really hot here for the last three days. Here's Mike Joy. Ken, I'm in Terry Labonte's pit. This walked the right rear tire on his car. He says he didn't think he hit anything. Uh, he just cut his tire down. This is not an inner tube. It's a safety inner liner that was developed in the 1960s initially so that if this outer tire cut down, the driver wouldn't be riding on the rim and crash. Now, Goodyear engineer here, and he was picking the serial trying to develop the history of this tire so they can go back and research and see if any other tires that were part of this batch might have a similar problem. Just a racing incident. 55 laps down, that racing incident. There you see what happened to the back end of that car when that tire yeah, tore up. Yeah, when it came apart, it, it, it tore the right rear quarter panel up on his Chevrolet as well. Ken, you're talking about that slick spot up between turn three and four. I would guess that it probably came maybe from Lake Speed's car. We saw him coming just as right. he entered pit road. A lot of smoke came from that car, which means that there was some oil coming down. It looked like it all came down on pit road, but it, some of it could have gotten out on the racetrack up there where Ernie Irvin spun out. And I would say that it would be that more so than the a track problem over in turn three. At least another lap before uh, we get underway, maybe a lap and a half. 16 cars in the lead lap. It's Father's Day, 94. What was the best Father's Day gift you ever gave your dad? <laughs> Here's what some Winston Cup drivers did. I guess when I was a kid, I was really proud of making this coffee mug when I was in about sixth grade i don't know there was really nothing you could ever give my dad to make him real happy except you know winning races he was a great race car driver the best thing would probably be a win because uh you know uh having my my real dad and my stepdad there it was uh it was tough all the racing that we did uh you know i guess just winning on father's day was usually the best present i could give him i'd say i've given him my respect that's probably the the, the thing that i've given my father most and uh at one time, uh, you get a certain age, you think you don't need to respect your father anymore. And uh, I've kind of been through that period now. I think I show him the respect that he deserves. He's taught me an awful lot in my life. That's Bobby Hillen currently running 26 in the race here today. Great kid out of Texas. Let's go to a David Hobbs. Well, you saw them putting ice down Jeff Gordon's chest. And I tell you what, you need it on a day like today. It's 95 here in the pits. Out in the cars, it's about 130, between 130 and 140 degrees. And then you've got to add to that the two or three layer uniform, underwear, a helmet, a, a balaclava helmet, which of course keeps off any uh, cooling effect, thick gloves, big helmet, thick shoes, socks, and some people even wear long johns. 
this, of course, is all for the uh, quest of safety in case of fire. But on the other hand, it allows the skin no chance to perspire freely and no cooling gets through to you. And I can really feel the Jeff Gordon having that ice chest stuffed down his ice bag stuffed down his chest. I could do the one down mine right now, Ken. <laughs> okay. Take a look at the uh, ice chest and uh, Mark Martin defeat. I'm not sure if it's a cool helmet or a cool suit that he used. I think it's just a helmet, right? It, it could very well be. It could be either. But uh, a helmet will work, cooling a helmet, cooling, keeping your head cool will work very, very well. Because they say if you keep your head cool, well, you know, everything else is okay. As long as the body thinks it's cool, it's cool. Yep. Here's Mark Martin in fifth spot. Gordon leads as we get ready for a go with Rusty Wallace in second, Ricky Rudd in third, Todd Bodine in fourth, Mark Martin in fifth, Dale Earnhardt in sixth, Waltrip is in seventh, Sterling Marlin eighth, Morgan Shepard in ninth, Schrader, Bobby Labonte is 11, Bill Elliott is in 12. Jody Macek is 13th, Rick Mast 14th. Try to give you all those cars to lead lap, John Andretti. Then uh, Rich Bickle back in 16th, should, uh, and John Andretti, Mast, Bickle right on the end of that. And again, some of the cars that are being shown in the lead lap, our scoring is showing that there are 16 cars on the lead lap right now, but some of them are just in front of the leaders out on the racetrack. Yep. They have just made green flag pit stops, and so, you see Morgan Shepard is up there right behind the pace car. He is not, uh, he's almost a lap down. So when they get the signal to restart the race, which I think they'll get this time by, then we'll see the leaders pull up there beside of them. Indeed, cars There's only going to be about either 10 or 11 cars that are actually on the lead lap. And that came as a result. There were about 27 or 28 cars on the lead lap before they started making their pit stops. But many had made green flag pit stops. And then when Jeff Gordon stayed out there, he got a lot of them a lap down. He got to pit under the caution. Others pitted under the green. As you look at the standings through 56 laps, we are now working the 59th and Earnhardt Marlin, both electing to come in and top their tanks. Let's see who else is going to try this. Terry Labonte's going to do it. Ward Burton. Jeff Burton. You see Earnhardt getting a splash. Strategy and track position, everything. Hi, Dad. Right. <laughs> Not forgetting in the Wallace crew, some folks that made it all possible for them. Doubling up and getting set on a restart. The cars that are a lap down are on the inside. Those that are in the lead lap are on the outside. As you see the 12th car, remember that Tim Steele is in there for Chuck Bound, our best to Chuck Bound and Debbie Bound. Chuck had a hard crash last week in Pocono, Pennsylvania. Broke his wrist, came out here, did a lap, had double and triple vision. And they, they went back home to North Carolina a day ago. Sure look forward to having Chuck back there. But Tim Steele qualified well and is giving number 12 a pretty good ride for Bobby Allison this afternoon, currently shown in 26th position. He was just ecstatic about getting this opportunity. He was sorry for the circumstances of Chuck Bowen that put him in this car, but he welcomed the opportunity to get in a first-class race car so that he can show the world what he can do because he wants to move to Winston Cup racing. He's the ARCA champion of 1993, Tim Steele. Pace car is in. Field coming down for a start. We'll be able to get a word from Jeff Bodine about what happened in, that incident. in a moment. Saw his car come in on the hook. Here's the restart. The 21 car, Morgan Shepard, had a relatively poor 23 second pit stop, which put him a lap behind the 24 at the time of the yellow. He's right on the tail end of things there. Trying to stay up. Yeah, there are a number of cars. They were permitted to stay up there on that outside because they were in the lead lap. So the, uh, the leader of the race would be Jeff Gordon. And, uh, of course, he's, he's back in the field. You see yeah, that on the 12. inside in the center of your screen. There's Jeff Gordon trying to fight his way out from under the lap bars. And there you see that, that car pulling up Nemechek on the outside of him. Gordon being very patient here. Doesn't want to throw anything away, then. Yeah, a lot of cars up there in front of him. There are really 23 cars being shown on the lead lap. Well, now it's back down to 19 as he has passed a couple of those. Boy, you see Derek Cope in the Cale Yarborough car right there, just in front of him. Kenny Wallace is there, the yellow car. That's Nemechek. Boy, they're really feather footing to get into that corner. They're yes, they are, off. but there's a lot of drivers that are running side by side through there. They're, they want to, and there's a car going very high, almost getting into the wall up there. Was that Greg 
sacks That's again. That's the 07. 07. That's that Pranifus oh. Haas car okay. again, Robbie Gordon. Boy, he got very high, almost got into the wall. Tim Rohrer, the crew chief, team manager, crew chief on that car. First time they've raced this team. Look at this side by side. That's Ernie Irvin, Ted Musgrave in car number 16. Here comes Morgan, Morgan Shepard. Shepard. Down on the inside. Now, many of these cars, in fact, all of these cars are one lap down, or almost a lap down. They're in the lead lap. Um, yep. uh, but they won. They're out in front of Jeff Gordon right now, who is actually leading the race. They're not far in front of him. You can see Jeff in this traffic right here. But as you say, he's being very careful. These cars are hoping for a caution so that they can get on back around and stay in the lead and lap. Go all the way around yep. and catch up with those leaders. Yep. And of course, they, almost, course. they almost had it when uh, Robbie Gordon got up in next to the wall that he Gathered it back in. There's Michael Waltrip yep. getting around Jeff Gordon. So he's moved back up in that lead lap. Number 30, Waltrip in 20th position. If we can, for just a moment as we follow this battle, let's see if we can get a word from Brett Bodine as to what happened that KO'd the Kenny Bernstein car today. He's down on pit road. Brett Bodine, Ken. Brett, what exactly happened out there? Well, I was going down into the third turn outside of Sterling Marlin. And evidently, we hit some fluid on the racetrack because the car just took off. Went straight to the right and uh, Tim Steele has crashed. Outside, Tim Steele has crashed on the outside into the wall. Car leans up against it in turn four. See the flaps up in the roof. He just leaned it up in there and crashed. We'll get try to get a word again with Bodine in a moment because this is about the same area where he got in trouble. And for the second straight week, the Bobby Allison car crumpled. The car at Pocono last week was totally destroyed in a crash with Sterling Marlin down in turn one on that two and a half mile track. Front end looks to be okay, but that back is sadly torn up. Yes, he got into the wall pretty good. One might have caused that. Ted Musgrave slowed very dramatically coming off of the turn. We're going to see about a dozen cars get back in the lead lap here as they come on around. They were in front of the leader, but Ted Musgrave slowed up there and the car started going everywhere, slowing down to try to get around him. Somebody perhaps hit him in the rear and uh, spun him around, but we'll see in a moment. But Ted Musgrave did slow. That uh, caused a lot of dashing around. Let's we'll take a look here and see what, well, there he is spinning. Don't know if somebody tapped him or if he just uh, ran up on somebody too quickly. And and you can see those roof flaps came up very quickly. And that's what they're designed to do when the car gets backwards to keep the car on the ground. Tim Steele in number 12. Okay, here's Ted Musgrave up on the left. He slowed dramatically there, but Tim Way Steele was already, already in a spinning position. He came out of some traffic there, whether he hit a slick spot, maybe got nudged just a little bit by someone. But anyway, he got up into the wall. I don't think Ted Musgrave had anything to do with that. And, of course, Ted didn't hit anything. He just slowed up there for a moment. So there's the car going back to the garage for the Allison team. Tim Steele, Chuck Bound ride. So that happened at lap 63. And now everyone is back on pit road. We well, are under caution. And it's those cars that are on pit road, Ken, are the ones that made up their lap. They came in to top off the fuel. We see Dale Jarrett coming out. Michael Walter just came in. We see the car number 28 coming out of the pits. A lot of them got back in the lead lap as a result of this situation right Let's here. Let's keep 20 cars in that lead lap. Let's see what more we can learn from David Hobbs talking with Brett Bodine about this racetrack and what happened to Brett here that knocked him out today. David? Well, Brett, you were saying you ran over some fluid and you got up off the track at turn three. How was that packed this afternoon? Well, you know, it's, it's just, it's bad. You know, let's face it, you know, uh, the bottom lane is tearing up. We're all trying to run in what is used to be the second lane. Now that's the preferred lane. And just outside of that is all the little pebbles. And what happens if you just happen to slip or slide up a little bit like I did because of the fluid, you know, you're, you're onto the pebbles and then it's just straight in the fence. Uh, you know, it's just unfortunate for us. Quaker State Ford was running awfully well. Just trying to put our time in and stay out of trouble. Unfortunately, trouble found us. You're going to be able to get back in? I think the guys are working on it. We'll try to get back out there and put some time in, get some more points. You're used to those uh, dirt roads up in Chimone County. You should be okay. Yeah, I thought I was going to be okay today. We had an awfully good race car, but, uh, you know, another day's get them at Daytona. <laughs> back to you, Ken, on the action on pit lane. His dad, Eli, looking on today. We can see a Bodine in victory lane. So, here's the situation. Jeff Gordon's out in front. Rudd is in second. Rusty Wallace is in third. 20 cars in the lead lap here at Michigan. Lap at 66 on the board. 
and we're in a lengthy caution period. We believe they're going to sweep turn three in just a moment. Try to get uh, a little better hold out there on the on those race cars. And David Hobbs has an update for us. He's standing by with Tim Steele. Tim Steele, current ARCA champion, who stepped in for Chuck Brown this weekend. What happened out there? You know, I don't really know. He's going into turn three and ended up we was racing pretty hard back in there and felt like it got loosened up. Maybe it took the air off spoil or whatever. Just got in there a little high and got up in the marbles. You know, it's it's unfortunate. I, maybe I should just backed off, but I was, you know, racing it. And, you know, it's just one of those things, I guess. And one of those mistakes you don't want to make twice. Well, you were racing for one of the all time greats, Bobby Allison. I mean, how did it feel to just step into that car at a moment's notice? You know, it felt really good. You know, I was heck, I didn't even have any expectations of being in this car. I was sitting over in my trailer in the Arca garage and Winston Cup practice had been going on for a good hour or so. And about noon, the Tom, the general manager of the team, comes over and asked me if I was interested in driving their car. And after I thought about it for maybe a tenth of a second or so, you know, I said, yeah, I'll, I'll drive the car. And, you know, we got like four laps of practice and then qualified. And, you know, it's just, it's unfortunate that it happened this way. I wanted to give them a good run. You had to think about it for a full tenth of a second, but tough luck and better luck next time anyway. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay. Tim Steele, take a look. A recap at some of the incidents we've seen here up in the third and fourth turn area. This is the first incident. It was in lap one, Ned. Jimmy Hensley getting number 55 sideways and around. Yes, and he backs into the wall. Of course, does quite a bit of damage to his car. It didn't hit the wall too hard. Certainly, he was okay, but... Uh, Put his car out of the race. Now, now look at Mr. Lucky, Ernie Irvin here. He, he hits the slick spot. The car goes around. He tries to save it. Maybe clips the wall just a little bit. No major damage. While that was going on back behind him, Loy Allen was spinning out as well. And Brett Bodine, of course, spun in that same incident. That was the second caution. And here is Ernie. We see him spinning, and then we'll see Boy Allen as he comes in behind Ernie and uh, spins also just a couple hundred feet farther back to the track as Ernie spins down to the inside. Now, as the safety crews are out on the track, now here we'll pull back and we'll see Boy yep. Allen. There you see his car spinning down into the grass area. As the safety crews are out on the track from this last incident, you see the number 12 car on the outside. And I think he just got his uh, right wheels in that slick stuff in turn three that we've been talking about. And it went around on him. No contact with any other car. And up into the wall he went. And guess what? This caution here with the number 12 car has allowed Ernie Urban to come from 21st to 10th. Pulled himself right back up in here. That back of the field rejoining the leaders. We'll have 19 cars in the lead lap back to Nemechek in 19th on a restart, which may be some time away. Let's go to the pits and talk with Mike Joy and Dick Bergman. Thanks, Ken. Here in Loy Allen's pit, they're cleaning the wheels where they glue the lug nuts on so they can adhere them quickly to the car. This is behind pit wall where they set these tires down after they come off the car. Anything that's stuck to the wheels kind of falls to the ground like it does right here. This is turn three. Asphalt's made up of an aggregate, little stone pebbles, and a binder, which is what most of this appears to be. And as it comes apart, well, Dick, you found a bunch of it. I sure did. It's yes. easy. It's just coming off the cars like crazy, Mike. And this is what they're blowing off the racetrack up there in turn three and four right now. Now, the way this gets there, when you use the eraser on the end of a pencil, it leaves some stuff on the paper. Well, the same thing happens to the asphalt, and this is it. It's on the grills, it's in the radiators, it's up in the wheelhouses, and it falls out of the wheels when they bring them here and set them on pit road. And, of course, one thing that they were concerned about, we haven't heard anything about it yet as far as overheating is concerned, that some of that might get up into the radiator of the car and stop it up, not get as much air as the engine needs, but we haven't seen that problem so far today. So maybe it's just gathering underneath the car and they're bringing it on pit road, as Mike and Dick reported. Well, they tried to improve things here. I don't think they expected any kind of heat like what we've been had enjoyed, I think is the word, maybe in quotation marks for the last several days in Michigan, and it's made it a stew out there instead of a real uh, strong course for these drivers to compete on. As we say they worked all night on it. They've done a good job of getting this back, and I think we're about a lap away. One lap will turn them loose. The, the officials have done a great job in trying to do this, and they didn't anticipate this hot weather. And you put new asphalt down, you put 3,500-pound race cars running in there at 185 miles an hour, it can do some damage. And uh, that's just, it's unfortunate that the timing was 
as it is, but uh, you know they'll make do and make the best of it. At the present time, we're showing five cars back in the garage. Some of them are convalescing. They will come back out, like speed cars being worked on. We expect to see a couple more back out here. Now, here's Bill Elliott's number 11. I think he's coming in just to top well. off the fuel, uh, Ken. He, he's going, he's a gas mileage king as well, the Junior Johnson team. Yep. And, and uh, they're cleaning the windshield, cleaning the grill. 16th. Here's Mike Joy. Well, I'm standing alongside Buddy Parrott as he checks over the conditions on the restart. He's the crew chief for uh, Rusty Wallace and a proud papa of two guys that work on his crew. Well, handling up in turns three and four is one question. The other we ask is about overheating. Is any of this asphalt stuff getting into the grill and, and causing Rusty's temperature to rise? Well, no, uh, really not. You know, the, the driver's temperature is cool in the car and the uh, engine temperature is running cool also. So, uh, and we're trying to stay real, real cool in here. Uh, we know we got a little problem up there, but you know, we can't do anything about mother nature and the hot air, hot, you know, things. Uh, the racetrack tried to fix the racetrack the best they could and uh, we got a little problem, but anyway, we're going racing right now and hope for the best. What did Todd and Brad give you for Father's Day? Well, uh, I got two cards this morning. And I thought that was really good, especially from Todd. <laughs> but anyway, Ken, <laughs> they're trying to keep their job. <laughs> Gordon in front, Ricky Rudd in second, Rusty Wallace third, Todd Bodine fourth, Mark Martin, Sterling Marlin, Dale Earnhardt in seventh, Jeff Purvis is in eighth, Ernie Irvin in ninth. From behind Jeff Gordon's car. Take a look at that shot as the number 10 rides right up in there, Ricky Rudd. Martin's roof cam right in the fifth spot. Ooh. Todd Bodine came awfully close to Bobby Hillen in the Hardy Brothers car, Charles Hardy. Down in Dawson, Dawson, Georgia. Georgia. Dawsonville, Georgia. Saw him at dinner last night, Charles Hardy. And a lot of people say that car, that black and yellow car, may be the Bill Elliott Trouble ride. up in turn five. three and four. Oh, seven. There's Gordon around again. Rick Mass caught up in the middle, number one. Robbie Gordon. And that is the second time he has had trouble up there. This time looks a lot more dangerous than the first occasion two days ago. Yeah, he has done a lot of damage to the car this time. Robbie Gordon, fresh from a third place finish in the Detroit Grand Prix for Indy cars, fifth at Indy, goes 71 laps before he crashes here in the Michigan 400. See on the side of the car, Krantipus Haas, Carl Haas, who of course has had a lot of success in Indy car racing. And Michael Krantipus, who ran the Ford racing program worldwide for many, many years, forming this team. See Robbie moving around in there. He's one thing that they, they're told in the driver's meeting is if you're okay, put that safety net down. That's an indication that he's okay, so he has done but that folks, already. Gordon's fourth career, Winston Cup effort. Summit Daytona 91, Richmond. Last year, Summit Talladega, taking that wild spin and ride in the trioval. Robbie Gordon climbs out, and we can see what happened here in just a moment, Ned. Okay, he's in the white car. You can see Oof. back there he and a couple of other cars. There was Mast. the Rick Mass car, Derek number Cope? one, and Derek Cope as well oh. in the car on the left of your screen. Derek comes on around. Take a look at it again from another angle. Maybe we can see more here. Derek Cope was involved. And Gordon was down on the oh. inside. He went up into the car number one knocked Rick Mask in the car number one up into the wall and Derek Cope was right in the middle of it. He got tagged a little bit as well, but Derek definitely around. a victim of circumstance yep. there. Former Daytona 500 winner. So Robbie Gordon walks away from the fourth caution period of the day. 72 of 200 laps are complete. Jeff Gordon, no relation, stays in first. Rusty Wallace in second. Mark Martin third. Five lead changes among five drivers, part of the story, but the major headline is up here in this area of the speedway, which has just collected Robbie Gordon's car. He lost it coming off the end of that new strip of asphalt. Goes up into the wall. Derek Cope just barely escapes the bullet. You see the area of the track, and that white there is the lime they put down and then tried to broom off. Here's Rick Mass, number one. And look at the uh, asphalt on the front of that car. You can see there is quite a bit that has come up into the grill of the car, and that's uh, one thing that they were concerned about before the race started. And you can see the damage to Robbie Gordon's car. 
I don't think we'll see that car back out there today. He has no reason to fix it. He's not running for points or anything like that. So sort of a bad start for the new team, but they know that that kind of thing can happen. You hear, you hear a lot about who might drive that and time to come. The Bill Elliott name comes up a lot of Ford, a lot of new drivers you hear about for that. Team. It'll Robbie be a Gordon, well, well respected team. Regular yes. IndyCar runner. Well, what's the best Father's Day gift you ever given your father? Here's what some of the Winston Cup folks said about that. We never were home on Father's Day, or my father was never home on Father's Day a lot of times. So Father's Day was never a big deal to us, and, and especially being from the South. Uh, Mother's Day is a national holiday in the South. Father's Day is just like a Monday or Tuesday. It just passes and nobody pays any attention to it. When I was growing up in Owensboro, we raced go-karts all the time, and we put a lot of time and effort and money and energy into go-kart racing. So I probably gave him a go-kart trophy somewhere some Sunday afternoon. Well, that's tough. Um, I'd say being born, but he'd probably disagree with me. We weren't a big present type deal. I, I think the biggest thing is that uh, the support that we have given him, but it's more of what he's done for us. Dale Jarrett. Let's go trackside with Dr. Dick Burton. I'm with Ray Evernham, and I'm wondering what this racetrack is doing to your game plan. Seems to be working out pretty well. You're still in the lead. Well, we've, we're just going to play our own, uh, our own plan. We're staying on it. Uh, our car's pretty good. It's pretty balanced. This is the car that we ran at Charlotte. Jeff's doing a great job. Pitcher's doing a great job. And I just want to say happy Father's Day to my dad and all the other dads out there, and I uh, sure hope that we can bring this one home for everybody on the crew's dad and, and Jeff's dad. It's not just the car they had at Charlotte. It's the car they won Charlotte with. Ray Evernham, who's grown up around racing from the short tracks, saw him in the IROC series for many years. This is his car, Jeff Gordon, that you're looking out of right now. Coming up next, Ion Sports Jam Pack. From Osaka, Japan, the endurance factor runs high. The Osaka Waterfront International Triathlon. In Africa, the Continental General Tire Wildlife Series shows how elephants are rescued from poachers. And there's also the 1994 Rhythmic Gymnastics National Championships, plus the Hampstead Stakes from Belmont Park. That's all later today on Ion Sports. Uh, look at that stuff coming up out there, Ned. Yes. Uh Boy. It throws it to the high side of the racetrack, and what they're doing now is trying to sweep it clean. At least we'll have a clean slate for a little while until they dig up some more. Big marbles out there. Here's David Hobbs. Well, I'm with Robbie Gordon, who's just come out of the hospital. Looks fine to me. How are you feeling, Robbie? Oh, you know, we're pissed off. I mean, we were running good and just kind of riding along, and Rick Mass ran right in the back of us. I was slowing down because cars in front of me were slowing down. And I guess he can't see or something. How was the track today? Ah, you know, it was, it was very difficult over in turn three. We got up close to the wall once before, and that's why I was being a little cautious going in there, and he just flat ran in the back of me. You got a lot of commitments this year. You were third last week in the Detroit Grand Prix. You're doing Portland next year. You're doing some off-road racing soon. How many more of these drives are you going to be able to do? I'd like to come back and do NASCAR again. You know, um, I'm, I'm definitely not going to give up. You know, we'll come back and do it again sometime. Great to hear from you. Mean, great to see you right. Ken? Doesn't sound like he's out for the congenial award today, Ned. <laughs> no, he was concerned, and uh, you know that's that's typical of many athletes. But when they they uh, feel that they've been done wrong, they they're going to get uh, a little upset about it. Working lap 77 right now. Here's Mike Joy. Well, I'm with Steve Meal, crew chief, team manager for Mark Martin, who dominated this race last year. Had to gas and go with nine laps to go. What about it for today? It looks like Jeff Gordon, Daryl Walter, a couple of guys are stretching gas mileage. And here at these last laps of caution, we keep seeing people stopping to top off. Yeah, we're getting real good gas mileage, and these last two cautions didn't open a window for fuel. And uh, with current conditions, we think there's going to be a lot of yellows anyway. Usually missions, Michigan stays green a long time and doesn't seem to be holding true today. So we're getting good gas mileage. That combined with the fact it looks like there'll be a bunch of yellows, we're not real concerned about it yet. It might rise up and beat us, but right now we're in good shape. What's Mark saying about turns three and four, and is the car heating up more than usual? Uh, he just thanked us for putting a cool helmet in. We never have, have <laughs> run one here before. It's awful hot here today. Uh, they got a trouble, real problem with the racetrack, but everybody's got the same problem, so we're all just out there doing the best we can. We just have to see how it shakes out. Well, this car dominated last year if you were with us on CBS and came within nine laps of winning. And then they went on a winning streak. They won four in a row and they moved up into points. Will it turn around today? We'll see. Well, take a look right now at the uh, lap leaders here thus far. Jeff Gordon, 
Rusty Wallace, Terry Labonte getting a shot at being up in first. Loy Allen led those first seven. Mark Martin, one lap, picked up five points. So we'll be back with more getting set for a restart another time here in the Michigan 400 on this Father's Day. This Michigan 400 race summary is sponsored by Goodyear, number one in tires. And here's how it looks after 156 of the 400 miles have been completed. Five leaders, five lead changes, and the average speed. Hey, they could get a record here today. Slowest Michigan 400 is 118 miles an hour. That was back in 82, and we darted and dotted in between the rain. You can see here the drivers that are out of the event. Hansley, Hamilton, Speed, and Steele. Okay, all gone by the wayside. Lake Speed may try to get back in here, get himself some more points. We'll have to wait and see on that one. Let's go down to David Hobbs. And I'm with Steve Brown, who's a PR director for the Michigan International Speedway. Your speedway seems to be coming in for a bit of flack from some of these drivers, Steve. Well, uh, you know, we have done the best job that we could do, considering that we've had five days of temperatures over 90 degrees. Uh, we had a situation that uh, uh, we repaved turn three back uh, the first week of May. We've had uh, Rusty Wallace testing here for four days. Uh, last week, we had the Cranifus Haas team here. Greg Sachs has been testing here. Had absolutely no problems till the temperatures got up into 90 degrees and 100 degrees like it has been for the past last five days. Can you see the uh, August race coming up? I mean, are you going to be able to fix it before that? Well, the, just a drop in the temperature would take care of it. Uh, so we don't anticipate any problems uh, for our IndyCar race in July 31st or for our uh, second Winston Cup race in August. There is no doubt about it. The temperatures have been extremely high, and you think that really is the problem? Well, there's no question. The track temperature uh, is probably in, a, in the range of 140 to 150 degrees, and up in turn three and four, because it's being at the north end of the track, it is exposed to the sun all day. And so the temperatures up there are a little higher than they are in turns one and two. So like I say, when you have uh, uh, asphalt uh, that is uh, less than six weeks old, it hasn't had the opportunity to cure and to change color, so the temperature on that is even a little higher than it would be uh, anyplace else. But the one thing about it is, uh, you know, we, uh, we watered it down to cool it down this morning and, and up until race time. And, uh, you know, I think that's a, it's the same conditions for all of them. And uh, hopefully it won't be uh, too much of a serious problem the rest of the race. Well, thanks very much, Gene. There's no doubt about it. It is extremely hot here today. And, of course, once it starts to break up with these heavy cars, uh, there's no way out of it. Indeed. You can get new asphalt down. I think everyone is aware if they've been around that. You, you put anything out here on pit road, try to jack a car up, you leave the, uh, the jack stands showing very dramatically how, how deep the asphalt is. Oh, yeah. Certainly there's a lot of people concerned about it, but they understand the reasons for the problems that we're seeing here today. Now, all the drivers seem to, to have said, you know, we're going to go out there and put on a show. A lot of folks have come out here to see us, and that's the condition. That's what we have to put up with. Here's Mike Joy. Ken, there are 12 Winston Cup drivers among just five surnames. Three Bodines, there's three Wallaces, a couple of Waltrips, and a couple of Burtons here as well, and two Labonis. Now, John Burton wears one son's hat, one son's shirt, and he's got both sons tied into his scanner. What do they give you for Father's Day? Well, I was hoping to have a much better Father's Day, but maybe things will get better. It's been a long day so far. Maybe things will turn around for us. You've supported both your boys through their growing up, and they're wanting to be race drivers going through the Bush Series and here to Winston Cup. Was there ever a time when either one didn't want to be a race driver? I cannot remember when they did not want to be a race driver. From seven years old until today, they've always wanted to drive race cars. you got to be awful proud of them. Thank you very much, so thank you, Jim. There's Ward Burton right there in the number 31. Uh, he's currently being shown in 34th position, and Jeff Burton in number 8 is being shown in 32nd, two laps down. Hey, Mike, is he still there? Uh, yes, Mr. he is, Mr. Burton's still there? Yeah. The last thing we saw of him at Pocono, Pennsylvania last week, big time uh, father in racing, owned a lot of race cars. He was the babysitter. Is that his job today? Well, uh, you know, the first toddler that we saw at the top of the show in that tease was, uh, <laughs> was Ward's son. Who's babysitting today? I think Tapitha's taking care of uh, Jeff today. Okay. So it's Father's Day, so uh, Granddad has a day off, and, and Mom has, uh, has young Jeb in tow. Jeb had his grandfather right up in high gear. He's not very, I think he's a year and something. He had Grandpa all <laughs> over running flat out. 
There you see the other Burton youngster that cut their teeth at the South Boston Speedway in Virginia in the world of motorsports. That's the Stavola car, number eight, powerful car. Now you're with the, the number 24, Jeff Gordon. And through these laps, he stays out in front. And we're up to 80 laps now that have been completed. So many under caution. This very ticklish situation. One lap, and they're going to be turning them loose again, Ned. Yep. Still have 19 cars in the lead lap. Jeff Gordon, of course, uh, heads those up. Mark Martin is second. Ernie Irvin third. Morgan Shepard is fourth. Ken Schrader fifth. Dale Jarrett sixth. Darrell Waltrip just came into the pits. He was seventh. Bill Elliott eighth. Ricky Rudd ninth. Todd Bodine tenth. Then Joe Nemechek, Terry Labonte, Rusty Wallace. He made a pit stop a little while ago. So did Dale Earnhardt and Michael Waltrip and Mark Sterling Marlin. Kenny Wallace still on the lead lap. Jeff Purvis and Bobby Labonte. And Darrell Waltrip has just pitted again. That'll put him on the tail end of that lead back in uh, 19th position with 80 complete. Under caution, the average speed down to 111 miles per hour. Four cautions, 33 laps. It's going to be a long day now. Yes, it is. It has uh, been a long 81 laps so far. And it would seem to mean that by the end, if they keep having these cautions, you're going to have 17 or 18 cars in there running together. It's harder to get away when you have these lengthy cautions out here. Yes. There's Jeff Bodine. He had made a green flag pit stop with an oil line problem down on the inside. He's uh, two laps down, yeah. 28th place. There's Junior. And hey, and he's a father. Yep. Uh, has a young uh, child. He has a car up here in eighth position with Elliott. And Jimmy Spencer back two laps down in 31st. Okay, the green flag waves. We're ready to go racing again. Gordon first. Martin right there with him in second. Back straight away on the sword out. This is all coming in lap 83. Let's see what they'll do with turn three this time around. There's Ernie Irvin down on the inside of Jeff Bodine. Bodine backs off and lets Ernie go. Now Ernie trying to move on the inside of Mark Martin, trying to take over second place. Couldn't do it that time. When you talk about teamsters, these guys can really drive. Nasty conditions here and so many of them handling it so well. Four Look wide as we come out through this trial that we said it's not uncommon to see three and four wide. Even going into the turn, there's still three wide. Now they get down to two wide. Irvin pushes it right through on the bottom. Slides it up out of turn two. Watch him attacking as they get down to that stretch. And come out digging for turn three. down on the inside of Lloyd Allen working, having a good run in the Wood Brothers cars in fourth place. Gordon slams the way down into the corner. There's Ernie Irvin going underneath and pulling up. lap cars go by him. Apparently his car not feeling just the way he wants for it to and Mark Martin will not overextend the car. If it's not feeling the way he wants it to he'll back off and ride there until he gets the car seated in. There we're looking out That's Mark, Martin. Mark Martin's car. Mark Martin back in third spot. For some reason scoring is showing him first but there's no possible way. Jeff Gordon as he looks back at Ernie Irvin who is running in second place. Jeff Gordon is the leader and Ernie Irvin running in second place to complete 86.
tough time qualifying at the end of the first qualifying period is back about 38. Look at him come up after Jeff Gordon in the 24. Chevrolet Ford battle on the back straightaway. Chevy leading Ford in second. Meanwhile, here comes Earnhardt. Moves under Bobby Hillen. Black car comes up on Ricky Rabbit. Now Earnhardt came in, put on four fresh tires, and there's Rusty Wallace. We see the nose of his car coming up there to car number two. He also made a pit stop, has the pressure tires, makes a difference, at least for several laps. Brand new tires will run faster. Earnhardt for ninth place. Wallace for 10th underneath Rudd. Joe Nemechek, the car on the right there in car number 41. He's uh, falling to run through. He's still in the Being shown in 11th place. Bobby Hillen in the 44. Runs in 21st. Back with the leaders. Ernie Urban has caught Jeff Gordon working on him. Jeff Bodine running very strong now, even though he's two laps down. Yes, two laps down. Greg Sachs right up in there, too, in the car 77. He also is two laps down. 29th position. Urban taking a shot on the inside. Pulls back out. Back straight away. Back up 180 miles an hour here. Bodine hanging tough with number seven. He'd like to get back one of those two laps. It stays with Jeff Gordon in front. Jeff Urban looking to the inside. Greg oh. Sachs coming up there on the outside of Jeff Bodine. Now they're racing for position. Both of them are two laps down but they're also up there racing with the guys who are racing for the lead. And there's Ward Burton coming up in there. Ward's about five laps down in the car number 31, but his car is very strong now. He had some problems early in the race, but now they have them straight down, and he's running with the leaders. Gordon and Irvin, first and second. Third spot stays with Mark Martin. the halfway. Of course, Ernie Irvin has not led this race. He has earned more bonus points this year than any other driver, and you get the bonus points by leading laps and leading the most laps, and he's done more of that than anyone else, but he's not led this race, so he has not gained those five bonus points. He wants to do that. Jeff Gordon will finish second to Ricky Rudd in this race. A year back, now leads. Ernie Irvin right there with him. Stick it right in there. Yeah, his car is running very strong. Mark Martin has felt his car out. He's in third place, but he's moved right back up in there running with it. CBS Sports coverage of the Michigan 400 will continue after this message. And a word from your local station. Riding with Mark Martin, who's just completed 95 of 200 laps in the Michigan 400. 200 laps the distance, and here you see him, ready to go after Ernie Irvin in a battle for second place, trying to put a lap on car number seven, Ernie Irvin. Uh, on number seven, that's Jeff Bodine. And up in front of them, Greg Sachs trying to get one of his laps back, and he did. He passed Jeff Gordon, and now he is only one, one lap in the distance around the racetrack behind. And that let open the door for Ernie Urban. Ernie Urban's taking the lead. He's got those five bonus points that he was wanting. Eight consecutive races. He has now had the lead. <laughs> They're not back to the line as they continue to scrap and fight around this thing. Here is Ernie Urban. Now look at that 31 getting down to the inside. Looks to me like 24 is getting loose. Well, he, he might be, but he's also driving very careful. Now Mark Martin gets on the inside of it. 
I think when Greg Sachs got up the side of Jeff Gordon, that Jeff just uh, decided, hey, I don't want to get in here and get mixed up too much. I want to be more careful. We got you know, we're only halfway through this way, it's not quite halfway. So I don't want to be in here taking any kind of chances. So he let him go when he backed off. That allowed the other uh, cars to get by. So a change of leadership. You see that the seven car and the 77 car have made up a lap. And it's still pretty even between those leaders as they continue to battle it out here. The 28 car, Ernie Irvin, is in command. He's trying to put the lap down again. Back to turn three. There you see Jeff Gordon still holding on in second spot between him and the leader, one of the Burton boys. Showing tremendous patience out here in number 24. His dad, his stepdad, is standing by with Dr. Dick Bergman down on Pitt Road. Wonder if uh, that kid's always been that patient, Dick. That's a good question, John. You have been with Jeff about forever and put him in a sprint car at age 13. Has he always been as patient as he seems to be now? Never. <laughs> the sprint car, there was 30 laps, elbows up, on the gas, hard as you can go. Our, our toughest deal has been keeping him calmed down and. Uh, He's really doing a good job at it. Now, Ray Everham's really helped him a lot. Rick Hendrick and the whole team's helped him a lot to calm down. They stay calm. That calms him down. I give some credit to John Bickford, too. Trying to win his second Winston Cup point counting race. In car number 24, Jeff Gordon rides in second spot. It's still Urban in first. Ken Schrader third. Mark Martin in fourth. That's right. Schrader to third. Mark Martin fourth. And here's Wallace and Earnhardt at it again. Eighth position. Wallace trying to take away eight. Earnhardt has it. They'll come around this time, get the halfway mark. And Earnhardt doesn't fight him too much. He lets him go because he didn't want to go on the outside going into that turn. There are a little less than three seconds behind the leader. They're talking about Urban now having led eight consecutive races a few moments ago. Bobby Allison led 32 consecutive races. 71, 72, 39, 39. Halfway, halfway leaders that have won this race. Davey did it, Rusty, Earnhardt, Buddy Baker in 79. What a great year he was having back in 79 and 80. has gotten back around Jeff Bodine and makes him two laps down. Now he's going to try to do the same thing to Greg Sachs, but couldn't do it. Now Jeff Bodine might get back by Ernie. Depends on the run he gets off of this turn. And Jeff gets a pretty good run. And he might move back up around Ernie Irvin. Looks like he will. Ernie will probably back off going into turn three. Not to be up on the outside going into that turn, and he does it. Interesting situation here. Ward Burton in that 31 car. Oh, Urban gets very high coming off of that turn. He not only loses those positions, he lost the lead. Mark Martin got by, goes all the way to third place. And Ward Burton, that 31st, 31st place runner, gets back one of five laps. Burton just got up a little bit higher coming off of that turn than he wanted to be. And uh, the car was not getting traction. He, he let off the accelerator just enough to, to keep it straight. He gave up those positions to save the race car. A lot of people would have thrown that one away. Yep. Very smart driver. Ernie Irvin might have a few years ago, but he has really... Well, there's another driver that's years. learned patience. Yes, he has. He has really matured over the years. Remember a couple of years ago, we had him on camera down in Talladega when he got up and apologized to the drivers for his uh, style of driving out on the racetrack. The local paper was talking about Swerve and Irvin has become maturing Yes, Irvin, sir. And he really is. three laps are complete and you see that again Bodine has made up a lap here's the uh, new leader Jeff Gordon number 24 they swap it around Mark Martin the second Ernie Irvin the third let's go down to Dick Bergman for this update
We're looking at the track temperature right now. It's 144 degrees down here in Pitt Road, and that is mighty hot. And I'm going to tell you what, these crews are about melting as well. We've seen EMTs down here trying to take care of some of these folks. Many of them are looking for whatever shade that they can find. But they're going to have to go to work real soon. Jeff Gordon will be in at about eight laps for pit stop. Greg Sachs went very high there. Jeff Lodine moves around him. And Ward Burton, now the leader, goes around Sachs. And puts him back two laps down again. But here comes Sachs back up. He's not afraid of that outside here in turns three and four. He just gets right on up there. Looks like he's going to stick for it. Usually, if you're the leader, you get a little breathing room. The leader here, Jeff Gordon, covered up in lap cars that won't give up. They're digging to get a lap back. You see Sachs in the 77 battered, busted up car. It's like somebody used to drive out on the island, Long Island, where he cut his teeth and modified racing. Again, Jeff Gordon showed patience, let him go. He knows yep. he's a couple of laps down, and Ernie Urban comes up there now. He wants to lead back. Ernie Urban coming after him another time. This is lap 105 of 200. Tremendous battle here at Michigan in Winston Cup racing. At the Michigan International Speedway, two-mile bank D-shaped oval, a, a first-time winner, Jeff Gordon, down at Charlotte this year, is currently in the leader, and they say he may be coming in in the next three laps. Here he is trying to put a lap again on Greg Sachs. Sachs running 28, a lap down in the second spot. There you see Greg Sachs just in front of Gordon, right behind Gordon. Hanging on to him all around the racetrack is Ernie Urban. And Robert Yates, number 28, stays in second. Going third is Mark Martin, the near winner a year ago. And right behind him in that bundle is Ken Schrader in fourth. Ken Schrader having a great run, staying right up there. And here comes Rusty Wallace. He has moved up to fifth. He made a late pit stop during that last caution and was back about 17th or 18th place. Now has worked his way back up to fifth. There's Morgan Shepard in sixth place. And you see Loy Allen. He's a lap car. He's running actually in the 19th, 20th position. Car number four showing some smoke, we're being told. Mark Martin, as you look at car number 75, further back in the field. That's Todd Bodine. And then here's Earnhardt just behind him in eighth. Uh, bad news for Sterling Marlin. Yeah, that, the red light on there, that's an indication that there's something wrong in the engine of his car. You can hear you can that hear there's, uh, yeah, yep. Yep, the engine has, has let go. Yeah, the squirrels and chipmunks up in there, they're yeah. scratching yeah. around. Sterling was running uh, up in ninth place when that happened. Still one of the cars on the lead lap, but you can hear that engine is not percolating well. He's going to get back to the pits. Okay. Well, there you see Wallace making a run. Gets it hung on the bottom, and he's up there for fourth as he clambers beneath. Oh, and now the 24 is going to pit. Looks like Martin's going to come in. Yeah, I think they're coming in together. They're racing to, to the, get to the end of pit road. Then they'll have to slow down to 65 miles an hour. Mike Joy standing by for the Mark Martin pit stop. Trying to follow this one. This is key under green. Well, Ken, indeed, this was a bit of a NASCAR version of let's make a deal. You want to pit with somebody so you can get back out and draft with them while the other cars later get in their sequence. Going to be, it looks like a standard two-tire change here only for Mark Martin. Dick Bergman's in Jeff Gordon's pit. And it's going to be a standard four-tire change for Jeff Gordon, Mike. These guys have been waiting for several laps. It's a very experienced crew. They work out every single morning. They practice these pit stops at night so they don't interfere with the work. Nice stop by Jeff. Jeff Gordon's group. And Mark Martin gets out in front. He'll stay in the lead lap. Jeff Gordon is going to go a lap down as the leaders come down on him. You'll see them go by on the outside there in just a moment. There they come. He's going to go a lap down. Mark Martin out in 14-4, 14-5, and Jeff Gordon was out in 18-3. Leaders. 
And of course, the leader is Ernie Irvin in the car number 28 as he shuffles it up with those lap cars. And boy, is he having a problem. Here's Rusty Wallace. He wants to lead going into turn three. Gets the nose on the inside of Irvin. Decides it's not time to do it yet. Now he pulls down as he come off of turn four. Ken Schrader up to third in the 25 car. Fords, one and two, side by side. Rusty's on the inside, Ernie's on the outside. Ernie left that lap, but now Rusty has the advantage going into turn one. He takes the lead. Now he can run a little bit longer because he made that late pit stop, so he won't have to come in for a little while. Let's get a report on why Mark Martin only took on those two tires. Mike? Well, Steve Neal talking to his crew here, uh, made a bit of a gamble that Jack Roush team is known to be contrary to. Why just two tires, Steve? Well, the leaders are coming, you know, and we're thinking they got to get tires in about 10 or 12 laps after us. Uh, here at Michigan, the Goodyear tires don't wear very much. We can run okay on just rides. We tried it in practice the past couple days. So we want to keep the leaders behind us in case the caution came out between the time we got tires and the time they needed to come get tires. So we're going to sweat it for about eight or 10 laps. We're going to be okay. It's a percentage move, Ken. 115 complete. Urban in. Saxon 77 in. Let's see if they change four. I suspect they'll change four. I don't know. Maybe on Ernie's car, they're just going to the right side. Yes, only two tires. Fill it up with gasoline, and he's away. Doesn't Greg Sachs will take on four tires on his car. Doesn't take long for word to spread, does it? No. No, it really doesn't. Sachs is away. Wallace by himself in first. Ken Schrader running in second. Four top tens for Schrader in the last five races. Ford and Chevrolet. And one and two. Ken Schrader is up in fourth place in the Winston Cup point standings as a result of his consistency this year. And third at Pocono last week, Ken Schrader. There you see Rusty Wallace trying for his third in a row. And there you see Schrader coming right with him. Todd Bodine is now in third. The lap car of Jeff Gordon as they're beginning to make these pit stops at Michigan in the 400. This Michigan 400 race summary is sponsored by Texaco Haviland. Add more life to your car. So let's update on the Michigan 400. After 244 miles, six liters, nine lead changes, a very slow 124 miles per hour with lengthy cautions created with incidents in turn three where they laid down 750 feet of new pavement and the heat got into it. Now here are some of the drivers reported out of the race. We're going to see some of these folks back. Others, terminal. Cars dead, already back in the transporter. Sterling Marlin, the winner at Daytona this year, as you watch this pit activity. Let's get down to David Hobbs. Well, I'm with Sterling Marlin, the Daytona 500 winner. What happened today, Sterling? Looks like uh, something come off the racetrack and knocked the oil pump belt and all the all uh, alternator and pulley belts and everything, and it uh, just locked locked the motor up. Uh, the Kodak Chevy was running great and would come way back up. We had a we could run fast as leaders after after 20 laps and had a good shot to win. It just wasn't meant to be today. What about in a couple of weeks' time down at Daytona? Uh, I'm ready to go back and uh, run second there several times in the firecracker, and uh, this will be the best car I've ever been in for down there. Hope we can go back and uh, win again in Daytona. Well, battle up. Down to you, Mike. David, most of the teams made routine four-tire stops. I'm down in uh, Dale Earnhardt's pit where there's a lot of Father's day in going on. Left front tire changer D Gene Dehart is Gary's son. Gary's the team manager for Terry Labonte. Jimmy Ellis changes the right rear. His dad, Terry, does engine R&D and is cleaning out the shop in California today. And Joe Dan Bailey, he's the tire specialist for this team. His dad is Winston Cup driver H.B. Bailey. And uh, Earnhardt, believe it or not, waved off a glass of cold water. Why anybody would do that on a day like this, I don't know. Dick? Well, I'll tell you what, Mike, when that caution flag came out, you might have thought it was Christmas down here in Rusty Wallace pit because the whole crew just jumped up and down. It was an early Christmas present. They really did want to pit under caution. When they got that opportunity, they took four tires, two cans of fuel. They did it in short order, 17.93. They say the car is working perfectly. 75 laps remain, and once again, they're trying to dust off that third turn area of the Michigan International Speedway. CBS sports coverage of the Michigan 400 continues after this message and a word from your local station. 
This CBS Sports Special, the Michigan 400, is sponsored by AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. Old Spice High Endurance, for long-lasting odor protection, demand proof, get Old Spice. And by Calcium Rich Tums. Tums helps wipe out heartburn and gives you calcium. So we're down to the last 150 miles here at Michigan International Speedway. Take a look at a couple of moments ago, Mark Martin getting ready to make a pit stop. Remember, they're at uh, 55 mile an hour limit. He's coming in here. You see uh, Ward Burton just in front of him. Gordon coming around. He comes in. One of the uh, mechanics on the Purvis car fell down and uh, took a little evasive action. He didn't take much evasive action, but NASCAR thanked him anyway. Mark Martin is back out on the track as we get ready on another restart, but it will be some time before we see it go under the flag and uh, in a race condition. They have the sweepers out on the track. Let's go to Mark Martin for a moment. Mark, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. How's it going out there for the car this afternoon? The car's handling great. Uh, we're a little bit behind, having a real hard time passing. The racetrack's in just awful shape. Uh, I'm real happy with this car. It's, this is a contender car, but we got to get it in position to, to do something with it. Well, Mark, NASCAR called you on the radio and thanked you for missing the guy on pit road there. That was some heads up driving as you came in. Well, I didn't want to run over the guy, but uh, I figured if I missed my pit box, they'd penalize me. So I, <laughs> I tried to I tried to miss him and get my box both. Well, you did a good job. Good luck to you there. Thank, Keep you. Thank you. Eighth place for Mark Martin in car number six. And I believe we're a lap or two away. Tough day on drivers here today. Really hot, difficult racetrack. If you weren't a race car driver here in Michigan this weekend, what would you be doing on this Father's Day? If I wasn't a race car driver this weekend, I'd probably be like 90% of the other people in 95 degree weather. I'd be on a lake somewhere just relaxing and having a cold one. I'm gonna get me one of those campers and I'm gonna come to the race and I'm gonna park out in the infield like everybody else and just check all that out. That looks pretty fun to me. Uh, I'd probably be sitting on Lake Norman, uh, riding sea dews, riding jet skis, or just sitting back on the boat dock. Well, I'd probably be up in the booth commentating the race, maybe, I don't know, but, uh, you know, I'd really like to be a crew chief if I wasn't a race car driver, but if I wasn't even in racing, I don't know what I'd be doing. I can't think of anything I'd rather be doing than floating along on a, on a body of water somewhere, on a, maybe a pontoon boat, and, uh, me and Stevie, my wife, and the two girls, and maybe doing a little fishing and I don't even like to fish. <laughs> now, here's how some of the people are escaping the heat today and still enjoying the 400. Here's David Hobbs. Well, that Kenny Wallace must be an optimist if he thinks he's going to get in the air-conditioned booth with Ken. They say that only mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. Well, do you talk about mad dogs? Who do you think got the prize for coming the furthest to see these races? I'll tell you, these two guys, Gary Peterson, and Peter Farrell came from Perth, Australia on Thursday evening, and they're going home tomorrow just to see this race. That has got to be some sort of record. What made you come so far? We, we, came across, we came across with Motor Racing Outreach to have a look at how their chapel service operates at a NASCAR meet. But I wish we'd come in winter, not summer, David. Well, it certainly is summer today, earlier than usual. Peter, what do you think of today's activities? Absolutely amazing, but certainly very, very hot. <laughs> very hot for you guys from Perth. And when are you going home tomorrow? We're going back tomorrow to our winter, so we figure, yeah, we, we can put up with another maybe two hours and then we've gone. What's the temperature back in Perth? A beautiful 60, 65 degrees Fahrenheit. But you get a lot of weather like this in the summer, right? Yeah, the summer's pretty warm, but it's a pretty dry heat. This one's a little bit damp. How do you think NASCAR would go down in Australia? <laughs> well, in Melbourne, down at the Thunderdome, it goes very, very well. I think we're probably a few years away from attracting these sort of crowds. But one of the things that we're hoping to do is to attract some of the top guys down to Australia to do a little bit of colour commentating and to do some spec driving for us down there. They want a, a colour commentator in Australia from America, they've got to be joking. <laughs> These guys have just done a 27,000 round, mile round trip for this race, Kent. That's uh, dedication. Australians are very big on stock car and very big on sprint car racing. Take a look at the uh, leaders here, showing 128 laps on the board. And as of 127, we have Wallace in first, Earnhardt in second after this rash of pit stops. Todd Bodine, Bill Elliott, Michael Waltrip in the top five. 
And in six through tenth, Bobby Labonte, Morgan Shepard, Mark Martin, and Joe Nemechek. Jeff Purvis having a great run here today. One here yesterday, too. Well, they brought the blower back in, getting set to go another time. One lap to a green flag condition. Wallace, Earnhardt, Bodine, Elliott ready to scramble in that lead. That's Todd Bodine. There are 17 cars being shown on the lead lap, but like we had earlier, two of those cars, Ken Schrader and Dale Jarrett, are almost a lap down. They're behind the pace car right now, but they are technically in the lead lap, but the leader is right on their back bumper. Both of them had just made green flag pit stops just before this caution came out, and so that cost them. Brett Bodine has rejoined the race. Remember, he socked the wall pretty hard earlier. And he is back out many laps down. We'll try to get that for you. That uh, sweeper laps, that, that's probably the biggest statistic here today. <laughs> They've had a lot of laps around here. <laughs> they, they may get in some more, too. Just might do it. That was for turn three. Start. Let's ride with Mark Martin. He's back at eighth spot on that lead lap. And watch that telemetry as he lights this car up. The interesting net. He'll try to keep it down to about 82, 8300 RPMs as he goes through the gears. He doesn't want to over rev it on the restart. It was here, really, was the turning point last year. Here they come for the line. Now is he in third gear? Yeah, he didn't. He didn't run it up uh, very far in the RPMs. He didn't get into 8,000 before he changed. See, he hits the brakes just a little bit going into turn one, especially in this kind of traffic. Yep. Had to back it out a little for Morgan Shepard. Finds a hole on the inside of Shepard, and there he goes. That's a battle for seventh spot that you're watching live as you ride with Mark Martin. You watch that telemetry at work as he brought it to speed. Rusty Wallace stays in first. Earnhardt in second. They once again round us two miles. There's Dale Jarrett trying to stay in the lead lap. Wallace got on the inside of him going into turn three. Jarrett was on the outside and back off. He and Ken Schrader both are hoping they can stay out in front of Wallace and get a caution here pretty early so they can get back in the lead lap. There's Earnhardt, closest to the front east end today. Todd Bodine, car number 75, having a great run here today in third place. Oh. Ooh, and he spins. Todd in trouble in the 75, and he has slapped it hard. Higher off the points on everybody's part. And Ken Schrader did get his lap back. Dale Jerry did not get his lap back. Todd Bodine running in third. Up there in turn three, tears up that factory store's car badly. And there's Here's his, his brother, brother Brett, pulls up there to see if he's okay. And he apparently gets the signal that he is. We see Todd moving around inside the car, so Brett moves on then once he's sure that his brother is okay. There's Todd Bodine, the youngest of the three Bodine brothers. On hitching the buckles and getting out, Todd Bodine had given it a great ride today for Butch Mock and was up into third spot when this incident took place. That was the hardest of the day. He really, and it looks, yeah, it looks like, like he may have hurt his leg. Yeah, he's, uh, he's limping a little. He doesn't want to put the full weight down on his, don't know which foot it is left foot. You can see he's holding his left foot up off the ground. His You're brother, right. who's running way back then, he's 70 laps down. Remember, he had trouble early. They worked and repaired in the cars. Came by and 
wanted to make sure and apparently got the wave and waved off and then he drove back around. Hey, Three let's brothers. Take, in, in let's take race. a look here. He goes on the inside of Dale Jarrett and just the car breaks loose on him. Just simply breaks loose as he tried to get on the inside of Jarrett coming around there and away he went into the wall and hit it hard. You can see that left front tire and wheel, yep. Yep. all of Go it on. coming apart. Yep. Yep. And hitting, hitting the wall on the left side the way that he did, that's the thing that the drivers hate the most. You saw Kyle Petty and another car come by on the inside down there, very heads up driving with them. That was the other car was the car number 81. 81. That was uh, uh, Kenny Wallace's Kenny car. Wallace. One of his four appearances in Winston Cup racing this year. There it is again. He just uh, goes from the inside of the racetrack right up and hits the wall hard. And you can see Jeff Purvis maybe hit that tire just a little bit as he came around. The spotters have got to be doing an incredible job up here from the roof today, keeping their drivers alert, because there's enough banking here to really hurt your vision. And they, they had them rolled pretty well that time. There are some of the spotters. They divided into two sections up here on the roof. The little building in the middle there is where Ned and I are having the opportunity to watch this one, and it's a wild one. We're at 139 laps, and there's another caution for trouble. Same old spot, turn three. Coming up next, Ion Sports Jam Pack from Osaka, Japan. The Endurance Factor runs high at the Osaka Waterfront International Triathlon. There's also the 1994 Rhythmic Gymnastics National Championships, plus the Hempstead Stakes from Belmont Park. Back in Michigan, picking up the remains of Todd Bodine's car after it slammed hard. Driver's side into the barrier on the outside of the third and fourth turn. Let's get this report from Mike Joy. Well, we will hold on that report uh, from Mike Joy for just a moment. Race held down in speed, and we'll go to uh, Mike Joy audio only for just a moment. Mike? Ken, they've got a system in Dale Earnhardt's pit uh, where they have a boom camera hanging out over the pit, and they can tape every single pit stop. Well, uh, I'll tell you what. Let's wait till we get camera. We'll get back and show it to you. Rusty Wallace uh, will be leading this group with Dale Earnhardt in second, Bill Elliott in third, Michael Waltrip fourth, Mark Martin fifth, Bobby Labonte sixth. And there you see the remains of that 75 coming up on the carrier. That was reminiscent of the crash that Bound had last week at Pocono, and he got the driver's side into the wall. Chuck not as fortunate as Todd Bodine, and we're trying to get an update on Todd. We saw some assistance being rendered to him as they took him over to the infield hospital here for a checkout. Take a look at the running order here with Wallace, Earnhardt, Elliott in the top three. This is after 135 have been completed of 200. As you look back through the field, Bobby Labonte has stayed the course up there in six. Ernie Irvin, going to hear more from him before the day is over. Morgan Shepard nearly a lap down, able to get back into it. Nemechek is having another good run today. And Kenny Wallace, in one of his four Winston Cup appearances this year, Grand National regular, he's having a good day in 12th position. Darrell Waltrip is still part of that lead lap, too, yep. Ned. There are 16 cars on the lead lap. We'll see uh, there, Ted Musgrave is the last car that's on the lead lap. And you see Dale Jarrett is a lap down. He mm -hmm. and Kyle Petty both. And they've made green flag pit stops. And uh, never got, the caution came out. And so that got him caught up the lap down. And Jeff Purvis, who is running that car this year in, in memory of Neil Bonnet, he's having a, a good run, still yes, in 15th is. position. Yeah, he's having a great run. Looks like one to go this time around, and they'll turn him loose. Todd Bodine has had some misfortune of recently. As you watch Rusty Wallace come back up with Dale Earnhardt, light will come off on the pace car. Bill Elliott back to third. Track he likes, qualified well again this year for this race. He did qualify well, but in uh, third position, and he's right back up there in third right now. Dad, George Elliott, watching down there in the state of Georgia, in Dawsonville this afternoon. Hope you're enjoying the race. Long time between wins for Bill Elliott. Last win in Atlanta in 92. An update from Mike Joy. 
Let's try this again, Ken. Here's how the best get better. At the end of this boom, hanging out over Dale Earnhardt's pit is a small mini camera, much like we use on the onboard race cams. They videotape every pit stop and then come right back here to the back of the war wagon in the pits, and Andy Petrie shows all the crew members the pit stop in detail so that every over-the-wall man can see how he did his job and get a look at how they can improve and make things better. What have you, what have you learned from this? What's really helped you? Well, going back and looking at it after we made the stop helps, you know, right here on the spot, but we take them back to the shop, look at them, you know, we have a team meeting over them and uh, see where, where our mistakes might be and where we can improve. You know, it's really been a big help to us because until now we've uh, had to go back and just go from what observers have seen, you know, and what we can see now, but it's really helped. Okay, instant replay right here on pit road, Ken. And for Earnhardt, any, anything. Get him up. He's 139 points behind Ernie Urban in the standing. That would be a big help. Check that stuff out. Oh, yes. Out. Yes, technology has improved in, tremendously in every aspect of the sport. Take a look at those out of the race thus far. Hensley, in the, they show it as lap two. It was lap one when he got in the wall. Lap two when they brought it in. Hamilton, Lake Speed out, lost a motor. Steele driving the Allison car. Robbie Gordon in the uh, Cranipus Haas car out, crashed again. And almost all of these crashes in the same part of the racetrack. So we're ready to go racing. Green is coming on. They'll come by to complete 138. And the battle up in front is the traditional war between Rusty Wallace going for his third win of the year. Dale Earnhardt right there with him. Dale Jarrett down on the inside trying to get back on the lead lap. Not going to be able to do it. His car has been pushing a little bit today, and Wallace beats him off the turn. See Terry Labonte's number five. He is now two laps down in 22nd position. Earnhardt to the inside. Under the 93 day, 500 champion. Dale Jarrett on the outside. Earnhardt leads her down to the bottom. Michael Waltrip for the moment being shown in third. Let's go to David Hawks. Todd Bodine has had a very eventful afternoon. He got involved in that first lap spin, dropped right to the back, came in, they looked over the car, he said it vibrated, and he carried on right up to the lead and hovered about in the top four or five most of the afternoon. Unfortunately, what happened, Todd? Just lost a tire going into three. Uh, you know, that's, our, that's typical racing luck for me this year. We, we've had a good car every week and something happens. The factory stores and Adidas, you know, they're still behind us, pushing us, and, and we're trying to keep it up front, and we keep doing it, and, and bad luck just keeps plaguing us, but, uh, you know, we'll keep, we'll keep going. Uh, it's just a shame when you got a car that good, and I was just trying to pace myself and stay out of trouble and, and just be with the leaders and be there at the end, and everything was going perfect, and I hate it for the guys. They had some great pit stops. The car worked perfect all day, and, you know, I just wish it could have been a better, better Father's Day for you, Dad, but... We'll get it next week. Your dad's watching right now. What about your foot? I see it strapped up. How bad is it? It's uh, probably chipped right at the ankle bone. It didn't break it totally or anything. It's got a bad bruise on it. Uh, when I hit the wall, I had my foot on the brake pedal, and it went come off the brake and hit the clutch pedal sideways at about a 100 mile an hour. So it hurts a little bit, but I'll be all right. Well, an unhappy father day for Mr. Bodine. He had three sons in the race, and one of them's out here, and we saw one earlier on out. So back to you, Ken, in the booth. Thank you, David, and here comes Ernie Irvin, again in third spot. Michael Waltrip has fallen to fourth in the yellow number 30. Closing up, Rusty Wallace and Earnhardt stay in the lead. Then you see Ernie Irvin at 28 right there as they put a lap on Dale Jarrett. Mark Martin has moved up to the fifth place now. Morgan Shepard to sixth, and Elliott seventh. Elliott was third when the green flag came out, but he has dropped back a little bit. And again, Terry Labonte, the number five car, 22nd position, two laps down to the leaders, Wallace and Earnhardt. Rich Bickle on pit road, an unscheduled pit stop for him in the Harry Melling entry. Also back there in that grouping is Jeff Bodine. He's running two laps down in the seven car, 23rd position. Earnhardt mounting an attack.
straightaway. Derek Colt brings the tail yard row, number 98, back on the pit road. Derek is being shown 51 laps down already. He was in the garage area for quite a while. Earnhardt wants the lead. He has not had the lead so far today. He wants those five bonus points. Colt was being shown in 36 when he brought it in. just don't look stable as they come to three and four. You can see him fight to get him back. And here's Earnhardt. He had thought he had Wallace uh, up beside him, but he couldn't quite pull it off. Coming off the turn four, he'll try again. Looks to the inside. Now Terry Labotti looks down there, but no run for him. Wallace fighting to keep five points away from Earnhardt and drawing away here by five, six car lengths as they head down the backstretch. And back comes Earnhardt another time. This at lap 144 of 200 in the Michigan 400. On our way back to the Michigan 400, James Brown in New York wishing you a happy Father's Day and reminding you coming up next, Ion Sports will take you live to Belmont Park for the Hempstead Handicap. Also ahead, the Rhythmic Gymnastics National Championships and the grueling Osaka Waterfront International Triathlon. Next on the eye. Rusty Wallace continues to extend his lead in the Michigan 400. Over Dale Earnhardt, Ernie Irvin, Mark Martin, and Michael Waltrip, the top five. Six through ten are Bill Elliott, Morgan Shepard, Jeff Gordon, Ricky Rudd, and Ken Schrader. With Ned Jarrett, I'm Ken Squire. Top side, Dick Bergen, David Hobbs, Mike Joy down there in 95-plus heat at Michigan International Speedway today. And taking a look at Ernie Irvin right now in third spot, right with him. The 28 car is Mark Martin. He's in fourth. And from Mark Martin's onboard camera. Look at the sun just beating in on him there. 135 degrees plus, they say, in that cockpit. So as you ride in this broiler, just remember you're going up to, uh, I'm sure the celebrity give us 181, 182 right here. And do a little dirt tracking in turn three. You just joining us, turn three. That's brand new pavement. It's been so hot that pavement hasn't set. And it's like driving onto a gravel road at 185 miles an hour what a driver told us this morning. Now he's heading into turn one. Doesn't take long to cover two miles. About 41 seconds. See, hear him back off going into the turn. Picks up a little bit on Irvin going into turn. Irvin goes a little bit high. Martin keeps it down low. And he is really picking up. He wants to make a pass for third. For third. Martin has not won since last November at Phoenix. And he takes a notch right here. His car just got too high. He might have had to back off the gas a little bit, and Mark took advantage of it. Just drove right up on the uh, inside of him, took over the third position. So now he goes looking for Wallace first, Earnhardt second. Mark Martin, what a ride. Here you are on the bank D, coming down into turn one. Just a little bit there as he backs off, decelerates into the turn as RPMs will go down. Went down to about 7,000. Now we'll see them increase as he heads up the back stretch, getting up over 8,000. 8,200, 8,300, 84. He even hits 86 there at one point. One and six tenths of a second down. And I think we'll see the speed actually go a little higher on the front straightaway here, Ken, or on the trioval than we see on the back stretch. We'll see how fast it does get, 177, 8, 9, 181, it hit there, 184, 5, 187, 190. Whoa. Wow. He means business. He's yes, coming he out here. He's looking for Wallace and Earnhardt. He has driven away from the 28 car of Ernie Irvin. There's the leader that he's seeking, Wallace. There's Earnhardt in that second position. Mark Martin is gaining on him. Jeff Woodine, two laps down behind him, and here comes Martin. Ooh, Earnhardt gets a little loose there as Woodine gets on the inside of him, and that gives Martin a little bit more momentum as he comes off the turn, picks up the draft of both of those cars. Mark Martin closing. Watching this live at Michigan International Speedway, 
closing in on Dale Earnhardt for second place. This is lap 153. Is in on Earnhardt. Ford's leading. Chevy of Earnhardt's in second. The Ford of Martin closing here. And down the main straightaway. Martin edging up. Let's see if he'll make a move in turn one. This car is very strong in turns one and two. And while we're watching this, Ken, there's some great racing going on back here. Michael Waltham is running fifth. Martin. Uh, Morgan Shepard is in sixth place. He has found him a high groove that's working for him. Looking, look at him pull up on the outside. And Michael Walker, Michael gives him the running room he needs. He passed Bill Elliott the last lap on the outside. Jeff Gordon is in there. They're battling for fifth. Morgan Shepard has just taken it over. And moves for Michael Walker back to sixth. There's Jeff Gordon. He is in seventh place. Dale Jarrett's a lap down. Then Bill Elliott in the car number 11. Eight. And Ricky Rudd. Ken Schrader, all of those. Ten. Joe Nemechek. Nemechek, 11. Bobby Labonte. Boy, they're having 12. a great race back here. Musgrave, 13. And Kenny Wallace, 14th. In that number 81, back up front. Second spot right here. Earnhardt's there. Here comes Martin after him another time. Going to be a dandy finish here. Don't go away. Well, there's your difference between first and second place. Rusty Wallace in the two car out of four. Then it's Earnhardt. And right up against his rear bumper, Mark Martin in third, followed by Shepard and Waltrip. Jeff Gordon, Ernie Urban, Ken Schrader, Ricky Rudd, and Bill Elliott rounding out that top ten. Sixteen cars remain in the lead lap. Back a little further. Here you see Jeff Gordon. He's holding on in fifth, and you see the lap car, Dale Jarrett, Ricky Rudd is right there. Michael Walker back to seventh. Irvin has fallen from fourth to 13th in the last three laps. Yeah, his, uh, something has happened to Ernie Irvin's car. He, he was right in the middle of this back two laps ago, and now has, has dropped back. Uh, let's go to the pits for the story on uh, Ernie Irvin. Well, Ned, the bad news is that he believes, just like last week at Pocono, that he's running on only seven cylinders. The good news, if you can call it that, since he is the point leader, is that not counting the one race he's fallen out of, their worst finishes of the year are a sixth and a seventh, and in both those cases, they were running on just seven cylinders. All his other finishes have been top five. Ken? He continues to back up. He's now running 11 seconds down to the leader. You see him back there with Rick Nast, who is himself a lap away in 19th position. And you can see how quickly he goes past him. That's an indication that Irvin does not have the horsepower. He did it on the straightaway, just drove right on around him. So, yes, he has lost power. Up to 13. Ernie Irvin. Wallace. Continuing to make it his race. Here's the battle for second. Mark Martin, you're riding with him on the inside, trying to get beneath Earnhardt. Earnhardt's going a little bit high coming off the turn, and Martin runs up on him, but then Earnhardt gets her going down the straightaway. They're heading into turn three right now. You can see Earnhardt going pretty low on the track. So does Mark Martin. That's the groove they want to stay in through that part of the track that looks to be in pretty good shape right now. Had a lot of problems with it earlier, but they're doing okay out there now with that. Two-time winner is 400. Earnhardt again holding off Mark Martin. 187 over Davey Allison and a 90 over Ernie Irvin. There's that interval. And the first place car, Wallace, for that battle. Second and third right here. Earnhardt, Martin. Four, Chevy Ford. Interval is one and nine tenths of a second. And he's, he's gradually gaining. Not about three or four laps ago, he was about a second and a half ahead. So he's pulling away just a little bit. 162 and 200 complete. Jeff Bodine, the other car in the picture there, he is two laps down. He's in the 22nd position. Jeff has run with the leaders as we see Mark Martin trying to get on the inside of Earnhardt, but it's not going to work this time. 
Shepard slowing down. Yeah, he had moved up to fourth place and had pulled away from this group of cars, but now he is slowing down. And look at Nemechek still coming on. He's rolling up through the field. Had been shown in ninth. You see Schrader diving beneath Morgan Shepard. How about this for Kenny Wallace? This is his first time out in the Winston Cup car in what? Seven months, Ned? It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. He's running the full NASCAR Bush Series schedule this year. Plans to go Winston Cup racing full time with this Phil Martossi car in 1995. In the lead lap, 16th position right now, staying up there with the leaders, Kenny Wallace. Rusty Wallace, his brother, is on the top end of this lap. Earnhardt's in second, Martin in third. Gordon in fourth, Shepard in fifth at the Michigan 400. 164 complete. This CBS Sports Special, the Michigan 400, is sponsored by the all-new Ford Windstar. The future of minivans begins today. Haviland Formula 3 motor oil. Add more life to your car. And by... Goodyear, number one in tires. Well, the confrontation is still for second position. Martin working on Earnhardt. They're averaging about 175 miles an hour per lap, but the average speed is way down. 122 miles an hour today. 160 is the record established by Davy Allison, the late Davy Allison, in 1991. As you look at the standings here, Michael Waltrip having a great day in six, Raider to seventh. Nemechek, eighth. Morgan Shepard is falling back from where we were at 167. Still holding on. Here's your interval between first and second. Wallace in the lead. Earnhardt and Martin continuing to duke it out for that second position. Down the back straightaway. That's the difference. For the moment, looks like they're willing to run nose to tail and try to make an indentation into this Wallace lead. Well, they get up there and race side by side as they did a couple of times. So Mark got up the side of Earnhardt at a time or two, and that only cost them time on the racetrack. They could see Rusty Wallace getting away, so the best thing they can do is sit there and run in single file and try to, you know, maintain the distance as well as they can. For those of you just joining us to see the CBS Ion Sports, we're at lap 170, 30 laps remaining. We've had some very lengthy cautions. We've had a trek out here in turn three that's ripped and ragged. They put down new paving. It has been so hot it really didn't set. We've had car after car slithering, sliding, skittering up into the wall over here. Several crashes. No driver has been seriously hurt in two days, but it has been wild, and nobody's giving an inch. Here's Wallace still bearing down with the advantage. Better than a one-second advantage. Here are the drivers who have led. Rusty Wallace has led the most, 73. Jeff Gordon has led 62. Terry Labonte was out front early in the race for 17 laps. And Ernie Irvin led nine laps. Loy Allen was the first leader, led seven laps. And Mark Martin got in one lap before green flag pit stop. Drivers leading most laps have won eight of 13 Winston Cup races in 94. Extra few points, too, for leading the yeah. most laps, taking a look further back. Here you see Michael Waltrip. He's running in sixth. Remember, Gordon is in fourth. Ricky Rudd is in fifth. And let's go to Dick Bergman. Well, Mark Martin is having problems this morning. Steve Meal, his crew chief, told me that the only question that they really had about today was whether a crash was going to take them out or overheating. And the answer is, it looks like overheating. They are in the danger zone. However, they're going to pit on lap 175 as a scheduled pit stop to plan. Take two tires, get right back out there, try to run to the end before this thing cooks itself to death. Now, the first car in that lead pack of 16 cars is Kenny Wallace. He's just come in. He just came in, and Bobby Labonte just made a pit stop a lap ago. He was in the lead lap as well. So we will see green flag pit stops coming up here very shortly. That is, if there's no caution flag, the pit stops will be coming up here before too long. Everybody will have to make at least one more pit stop. Kenny Wallace just made his last pit stop. So we'll be 
standing by and Rusty Wallace and Earnhardt's pit and Martins to see what's going to transpire here this last time out. Yeah, and will they take on Ernie Urban is coming into the pits right now. He had dropped back as we had documented his car had lost some power. He's coming into the pit and will the leaders take on two tires or four tires or just gas? What will they do? You can rest assured I think that they will take on these two tires. Let's see Ernie Urban is coming in right now. They're making a chassis adjustment back there. Robert Gates, the owner of the car maker, Larry McReynolds, the crew chief, I should have said, and changing right side tires. Running 14th as he came in. And the Jackman fell as he went across, but he scooted right on out of the way. 10.8 seconds. Trouble. Here up on turn four. That's Bobby Hillen. Hillen, that new Hardy car. Caution is out, and that's going to be a disadvantage for those who had made a pit stop and an advantage for those who needed to make a pit stop. Works against Kenny Wallace, works against Bobby Labonte. Works Not very much in favor of Wallace, Earnhardt, Martin, Gordon, Rudd, Michael Waltrip, Schrader, Nemechek. Yeah, Michael Waltrip had just come on pit road, but he went on back out and did not, uh, did not stop, stop for his service. Break for Elliott, Musgrave. Take a look at it again. And he gets up there, the car just breaks loose. Bobby Hillen with the Hardy car just barely touches the wall out there on the outside. Not too much. Don't think it did a great deal of damage. Slides down to the grass on the inside. You know, we were talking about who that works against. The one it works against that's the biggest story is Ernie Urban. Yeah, the he just made car. a pit Remember, stop. He just come in. And uh, doesn't have the power that he needs. Yes, that's definitely going to uh, cost him. We're showing only 13 cars now in the lead lap. And they're going to bring the broom back out, so that means we're going to get three or four laps under caution minimum. Here come those leaders ready to make this key stop. This should be the last time they need to come in. Rusty Wallace, Dale Earnhardt at number three, Mark Martin. All easy down onto the speed limit of 55 miles an hour for Pitt Road. Mark Martin giving us these great pictures today. So there is no possibility of any kind of a speed record here today. Slow record was the potential. Let's go to Dick Bergman. Rusty Wallace is in the pit area again. This engine is silent. It is not running at all at the moment. Buddy Parrott spraying ether in the area of the pal trying to get it started. Wallace with his hand on the ignition. It's trying. It hasn't fired yet. Rusty still with his hand on the ignition. Pirate putting more ether in. The leader in trouble in the pit area. One can of fuel in. The engine just fired. Rusty Wallace just fired up. Long pit stop. The crew pushing the car off. 23.78 installed. It fired. It stalled. Parrot still putting ether in the hood. They're pushing it down pit road. It won't run. Rusty Wallace gets away. Buddy Parrot falls on pit road. His crew members go to try to help him. Dramatic moment here on pit road. Helping Buddy Parrot away. There's one game old guy. He's tough. He is tough. He was a great diver in high school. After that, he was a fine athlete. A couple of boys looked really yeah. strong. Had a lot of race cars. He gave it everything he had and then some to get Wallace back in there. Let's go back to Mike Joy. Well, I'm in Dale Earnhardt's pit where again the stop was routine as it was next door at Bill Elliott's. This time Earnhardt called in and he said he wanted that glass of water and took two and got back out there with again four tires and gasoline. That's been the story all up and down pit road here. In that recap of second generation fellows on Earnhardt's crew, I neglected Danny Myers. Of course, his dad and uncle were both great NASCAR stars of the 1950s and 60s. And Ken with, well, what, just 23 laps to go. Everybody can make it from here if we are caution free. Dick Bergen with Buddy Parrott. Buddy's sitting on pit road right now. Buddy, are you all right? Yeah, I'm okay. I hurt my, hurt my leg a little bit, but I'll be all right. A little out of breath. <laughs> How about the engine on the car? Is it all right? He's going to try to catch his breath. Is the engine okay, buddy? Yeah, the engine's fine. Yeah, we, uh, we just ran her a little tight on gas. Uh, what happens is that this whole place is kind of a turn, and he, uh, you know, he fed the fuel to the inside of the car, and it ran out of gas. So we were coming in that lap, and we'd have been okay, but then the caution came out. Well, they're okay. They're running back out there again now. The car appears to be all right. 
And of course, when that caution came out, he had to go another lap around the racetrack. And as he said, it run him awfully close. Ran it on fumes. Ninth race this year that Dale Earnhardt has led the Michigan 400. Back with more of the story and the finish in a moment. One hundred seventy seven and two hundred laps down Ned and Dale Earnhardt now has taken the lead as a result of pit stops. Mark Martin moved into second Ricky Rudd third Ken Schrader fourth Morgan Shepard fifth. Looking a little further back Nemechek kid from Florida flying former Grand National Champion Elliott stays seventh. Look at Michael Waltrip in tenth and interesting to note here that just behind them as we complete the guys in that uh, top group. Daryl Waltrip is back there. Rusty Wallace. It'll be fun to watch Wallace now as he fights his way back through. Jeff Purvis stays up in this group. He's one lap down just on the tail end in 13th position. Really given that car a ride. Taking a look at some of the further standings. Uh, Dale's up to 16th. Bobby Labonte back to 17th. Ernie Irvin in 19th. That's going to change the points around a bit more. Not really change them because he had that dramatic lead. 139 points coming in here. But it's certainly going to tighten them back up again. If they stay that way, if yep. Earnhardt goes on to finish yep. up, up towards the front and Irvin having his problems here today. So, yes, it will tighten well, it up. Know that everybody likes to see every car, but on this restart, you really want to see Wallace working because his attack in these final moments, they're putting the track back together in three. We should be getting to start in the next lap or two is where the drama is going to be in this one. They'll crank out those 175 mile an hour average laps and he will be trying to work his way back up onto the top of this leaderboard. Turn three is claimed to Hensley, Steele, Robbie Gordon, Todd Bodine, Great Sacks, all knocked out. Boy Allen got in the wall there, Ernie Irvin, Bobby Hillen, several others. Lake Speed lost an engine earlier, and as you, as you look down through the group, Rich Bickle overheating, Ward Burton's engine is gone. Been a tough day, a lot of guys. Engine went away on Cuckoo Marlin's car. Engine went away on Harry Gant. John Andretti had an overheating problem. Put him out of this thing. Here's Mike. Ken, let's put a period on one story and develop another. You mentioned Morgan Shepard quickly dropping back earlier. There's nothing wrong with the car. He just got into the loose stuff, fell out of the top five, and settled in ninth spot. The Wood Brothers car is okay. They've won 11 races here more than anybody. Jeff Gordon is another story. There is an oil leak underneath the hood. It's just a pinhole leak. It might be the oil pan, might be an oil line, but whatever, it's leaking a little bit onto his pit stall here, and it's leaking onto the header, producing a lot of smoke. He's been in here twice to have it looked at. Now they've got wrenches. If they pull him in again, they'll try to tighten it up. Uh, he's got plenty of oil, I think, supply to go the distance. Given the nature of the leak, it's just a safety matter. As long as he's not putting oil down on the racetrack, uh, he can run. Here he comes into the pits right now. Let's stay here for just a second as Ray Evernham's team will lift the hood one more time. There's a crew man here with uh, Nomex gloves and gauntlets to keep from getting burned as they go to the left rear and the right rear of the engine to try to tighten up an oil line. These are aircraft style fittings and we can see from here there's a lot of smoke coming out from the car where that oil is dripping just a bit. Mechanic nods. He says they've got it. And the hood goes back down. Jeff Gordon will go back in this race. Okay, they were given the signal, Mike, as they came by. The green flag will come out this next lap. Of course, they'll stay in the lead lap, and he'll drop in behind. That'll show him in 12th place. Right in back of Rusty Wallace, so that's where the action will be. Did I really have Cuckoo Marlin? Yeah, you We, you we need him out here. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Ion Sports coming up next. If you were looking for Ion Sports, we're down to the last moments about what 20 laps to go on this one finish it off in the Michigan 400 very lengthy race average speed 122 usually up in the 150s records 160 but not today 106 miles under yellow as we get set for a go two drivers uh, who are a lap down Dale Jarrett and Ernie Irvin pitted out of sequence they pitted when the leaders did they had to go to the end of the longest line so they're pretty far back in the field right now the green flag waves Green's down with 20 to go. 19 to go. Looks like Jeff Bodine might have blown an engine on the restart there. He's down on the inside. Running very slowly, bottom of the track. Musgrave shoots through under number 11. And here's Mark Martin going for the lead under Dale Earnhardt. Mark Martin, who dominated this race a year ago. 
now out in front, and here comes Rudd in the number 10. Ricky Rudd under Earnhardt for second spot. Last year's winner, and among those leaders, here comes Wallace getting trapped, trying to work his way out. Michael Waltrip right there with him. Kyle Petty sliding up a bit. And Earnhardt got back by Ricky Rudd for second place. While we're watching this, there's action everywhere, as we expected, with not that many laps to go. You know, the time has come to go. You've got to do everything you can. And it looked like Jeff Purvis down on the inside, who had been running up there in the top 10 all afternoon for a good portion of the afternoon, is having a problem. He might not get back to the start finish line. We'll see. Sorted out. Bobby Labonte. Lap down, being challenged. Terry Labonte in the five. Here are the leaders. Mark Martin. Earnhardt. Rudd. Schrader. One, two, three, four. There's Morgan Shepard in fifth place as Wallace continues to make his way up through the pack, but does he have enough time? There is a Rusty Wallace fan. <laughs> I'll say. Wallace trailing by one and nine tenths of a second. Now Bobby Labonte had made a green flag pit stop. He's a lap down in 15th position. You see Rick Mass number one. He's also a lap down. Running 14. Wallace, ooh, down to the inside. Mark Martin gets up in the loose stuff, goes very high. Still trying to get it back and got it. Dropped back to fifth place. He dropped back to six. Nemechek got by him as well. Bernhardt first, right in second. Schrader coming to third. Morgan Shepard to fourth. Nemechek back to fifth. Back straight away and back over 180 miles an hour. Earnhardt leading. Rudd right with him. Ricky Rudd trying to win it back to back. Rusty Wallace still trying to pick up spots in seven, trying to close on Nemechek. Take a look at Mark Martin fighting for the lead. What happened? Okay, he's going into the turn three. Everything just rolling along fine. About 183 right here. Yep. Taps the brakes. Takes it out. Whoa, whoa, the car. I don't know. It looked like he hit, hit something or dodged around something. And boy, it gets very high and lost a lot of positions. Here it is. There he goes high. Earnhardt goes by. Ricky Rudd goes by. Do not try this in your neighborhood. Look at this. Three and rest as they race for the front positions here at the Michigan International Speedway. Break for Wallace. That three wide. Here's Wallace scooting up the outside. He's got Trader. He's got Martin. He's into Morgan Shepard. Does he have enough time to catch Earnhardt? Earnhardt and Ricky Rudd pulling away. Shepard in fourth. Earnhardt leading right in second. What a story this one. Here comes Wallace on a roll for third. We'll be back for the finish in a moment. Ten laps to go to decide it all. They're bouncing them off the walls. Martin just slammed the wall and four. Came right down to the inside and never lifted. Rusty Wallace has closed in on Ricky Rudd in the number 10 for that second spot. Meanwhile, the Iron Man, Earnhardt, stays up in front. Earnhardt second in points, trying to close on Ernie Irvin in those championship standings. Irvin back in 19th place in this race. Here's Wallace going to the inside on Ricky Rudd for second position. Earnhardt is loving them running side by side back there. He hopes they do it for two or three laps. That let him open up a little bit of a lead. He knows how strong Wallace's car is. Don't know if he can hold him off if he gets to him or not. Now Wallace makes the pass. Going into turn one. But now Wallace has some making up to do. He's got to have somebody come with him. Here comes Mark Martin. He's got somebody coming with him. He's got three Fords. Three Fords there battling the Chevrolet of Earnhardt. Here comes Wallace closing in. 
we want to show you this incredible footage of the effort by Mark Martin. But it looks like the Cobra is ready to strike. Take a look at this. Coming out of turn four just moments ago. Bang in the wall, down to the inside. Never, Never lifted. Just hit this quick as a floorboard. Here's Mike Joy. Well, Ken, I'm with Richard Childers. He's watching his lead dwindle. He has a look at one. Richard, one Chevy against three Fords. You feel a little outgunned here at the OK Corral? Yeah, you know, uh, Rusty's car has really been working good the last few races. He's running good today. We're just going to do our best to hold him off right now. And Earnhardt's the best at doing that. We'll see how it plays out. 193 complete as they come by this time. Dick Bergeron. Buddy Parrott, can you do it? Well, I don't know. We're going to try our best. Uh, I know Earnhardt's going to mirror drive the heck out of us. But anyway, uh, I'd like to tell somebody hello today. Uh, Todd Parrott's father, uh, Tyler Parrott, said hello, Tyler. <laughs> All this okay. while fighting for the lead. That's Buddy's grandson, and That's he is right. some kind of proud of that grandson. Oh, he is so proud of that kid. <laughs> Look at Martin come right back. You're going to see some marks on the side of that number six when this one is over. Uh, he rode that car up on the wall. He brought it right down and kept on trucking. Well, he's mad about the circumstances that allowed him to lose the lead. In fact, he went from first back to about sixth place. He's fought his way back up to third. Now we're talking about Mark Martin. And he wants another chance at that lead. Let's not forget that Schrader is fifth, Shepard is sixth, Neiman Jeff is seventh, Michael Waltrip eighth, Musgrave ninth, Darrell is tenth, Elliott's eleventh, Gordon is back on the tail end. Back to the inside comes Mark Martin. He might, uh, he nope, couldn't quite get up there that time. He can't take the side of that thing and he just is not quitting. I thought he, he might, uh, in fact, he might be a spoiler as far as Rusty's chances of getting around Earnhardt. Every one of them want to win. They're going to drive their hearts out to try to do it. Morgan Shepard up into fifth. About six car lengths back from number 10, Ricky Rudd. Five laps remain. Earnhardt first. Wallace to the outside now. No way. No way. Peaks to the inside. That's such a great wide corner to pass on. Number three, so treacherous, so tricky today. Back straight away, full speed. Ricky Rudd hanging on in fourth place. His car not quite fast enough to, to get up there and battle with them, but he's keeping them inside in case they get up there and start messing around with each other. He'll be right there to take advantage of any mistake anyone might make. That controlled aggression of Earnhardt being controlled right now as we come down to four. But when Wallace makes the strike, you can be sure that Earnhardt will come for him. Buddy Parrott said he'll mirror drive. He's doing it. He knows how to keep that car as wide as anyone out here. And he's watching the moves of Wallace, and he's trying to keep him right back there behind it. The 1989 Winston Cup champion comes to the inside of a six-time champion, side by side, down into three. Wallace there. That's where he wanted to make the run. Now he slides up. Here comes Earnhardt back. Martin stays right there and looks him over. Now Martin to the inside. And the Earnhardt and Martin touch as they come down the front straightaway here. But that's working to the advantage of Rusty Wallace as they ran side by side for a moment. Wallace going for three in a row. Hey, what a buildup to Daytona on July the 2nd. Their next event. Then it's on to New Hampshire, New Hampshire International Speedway, and then Pocono, Pennsylvania. We'll be with you on the 24th from Talladega, Alabama. Wallace. And Martin and Earnhardt side by side. Great Earnhardt Wallace. went in on that turn on the outside, stayed there. Kenny Wallace pits another time. As his brother pulls away four, five car lengths. Two laps to go. It'll be the white flag when they come back. Wallace drawing away. As this street fight back here in second spot continues to erupt. And as it does, Wallace sneaks down the alley. Rusty Wallace in the Roger Penske car on the Roger Penske track, which has been a toughie today has fought his way back into this one from dead last in the lead lap with 10 to go. 
four, five car length advantage. White flag is out, one to go. The engine stalled as he came down out of fuel. Buddy Parrott threw his heart and soul into it, got him back in the event. It looks like it's going to pay off. making another stab. Couldn't do it. Earnhardt just flat drove in there as hard as he has all day long, kept the position. But give Martin the Medal of Honor for courage in this one. Checkers ready to fly. And the 36th career win for Rusty Wallace is scored on Father's Day 1994, his fifth of the season. And Earnhardt pulls to within 72 points of the Winston Cup leader, Ernie Irvin. What a race. with a brilliant run to third place. A courageous effort by Mark Martin. And Ricky Rudd fourth, Shepard fifth, Schrader sixth, Nemechek for seventh, Michael Waltrip eighth, Musgrave ninth. On the end of this one, Darrell Waltrip to 10th. Jeff Gordon had to settle for 12th. We'll be back with an interview with the winner in the course of Ion Sports. We've run way over this afternoon here at Michigan. So for Ned Jarrett, David Hobbs, Mike Joy, and Dick Bergren, this is Ken Squire saying so long from the Michigan International Speedway, where Rusty Wallace has won the Michigan 400, the 94 Michigan 400, a presentation of CBS.